So, welcome everybody to Plat Chat Valorant, episode 121. And I'm joined by the fellas. We got the fellas today. Bren to my left. Bala on the camera. Curtis in the production room. And Skip Wilkinson over there on the camera as well. <laughs> <laughs> What's going uh, on, wonderful, Skip? Wonderful, thank you. How are you, how are you feeling uh, today? You know, not too much. Uh, I'm, I'm chilling. Uh, just, you know, went and bought some pastries. I'm living my best UK <laughs> life. <laughs> That's it. That's it, really. Not going to say yeah. anything about LeBron. Skip. Uh, I'm worried about how that pastry will affect his legacy, um, and I don't think he's a great team leader. But apart from that, who knows? Uh, oh man, you drinking? Bren's drinking up that Red Bull. You need yeah, that, son. I need that. <laughs> yeah, I got my morning coffee here. We start. We, yeah, we're starting early today. We're starting real early. early I'm, I'm not a morning person. No. Or an afternoon person, <laughs> or an evening person. <laughs> so you're telling me you're not a person. <laughs> I, I, I like the I like the night. What are you guys um, talking about? We talk about my ranked experience. Do you have a poll? <laughs> oh, the poll. Okay. Oh, I can see that. Who is late? Uh, well, according to the poll, Sideshow is 74% <laughs> takes it. <laughs> he takes it down. I mean, that, that, that's fair enough, though. After last week when I delayed... Oh, it wasn't last week, but a couple of weeks ago when I delayed things for 50 minutes. Days. Yeah. <laughs> that's you've all been right, late. Wilkinson. Multiple, multiple yeah. episodes you've been late. But, that's but right. I'm, I'm, I'm racking up the good points now. I'm, I'm getting merits for turning up on time. I turned you, up like two minutes late today. You were late today as well, but you I was like the two most minutes late. late is the important point. Yeah, so yeah. you get away with it. Yeah, I locked myself oh. in the bathroom on accident and I couldn't get out. <laughs> no one knew where I was. It was really it's, it's stupid. Just a dumb maneuver. Um, guys, you want to talk about the breaking news? Valorant released a t-shirt. Did you guys? Yeah. <laughs> did, did you guys a t-shirt? I don't know. I, I love t-shirts. Mean, t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Ball, what's the problem? Why are you going to bed? Oh, he's Why are you putting the blanket over again, yourself? Man. You, Why are we always talking about clothing, man? You actually have We're the people comfy clothing. blanket. Dude, because we got... Uh, yeah, uh, I no, just said, no, yeah, no. but I don't even know if that's true. That's not it. That's not it, Kurt. <sighs> I just got a report. That's not it. <laughs> it's not, not it. Dude, my game... I've ordered the Game Changers hoodie. It got fucking stolen. Really? What? I my, I Porch like pirated? Door, yeah. Because I was Damn. away when I ordered it and it's exclusive. So I'm like, I got to order it now. Otherwise, it's going to be sold out. Oh, and that's so fucking, sad. I'll I go give back. you mine, Bren. Do you want to give me yours? All right. Yeah. I right, bet. No worries. Josh, you uh, fishing for the link right now? Yeah, I, I got the link. I mean, I, I just saw mm -hmm. it on the Valorant Competitive subreddit because uh, Run It Back had tweeted it. I have no further source than that, to be honest. Run It but, Back? Um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, they're, they're going from analytics Yo. into grip, <laughs> I guess. Drip. But, Yo, yeah, this okay. is... I got to say something. My, my passion just awoke. Okay, go, go, go. <laughs> go. I'm, so, I'm going to be real. Yep. I'm so tired of the word drip. Can we get it out of here in 2023? <laughs> Can we get the word drip out of here Why? in 2023? I'm just tired of it. I, I like it because I'm tired emote. of it and I'm sick of it. Have you seen a little emote on, on 7TV? No, but the, you listen... If you give me a little, give me, it's a little like spider really? monkey, really? Okay, see, like, if you give me a good no, 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 why do you hate it so much? Why do you hate the word so much? I feel much? like it's just played out. It's just been said so much. It's that, it's just, Whoa. it's been around for, it's just been, it's just, it's overdone. It's been overcooked. What? That's there it is. Drip the fuck oh, okay, out, bro. That, that's a good, that is a good emo. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> that is so that's fucking a good. It's a great emo. How many but channels what, is that on? What would you say? Do we have a secret here? Only 296? Yeah. yeah. Damn. My mods put me on that. Damn, yeah. they, were, they really did put you on that's a good that's a good gif emote um the audio listeners are fucking loving this segment <laughs> shout out to the audio <laughs> listeners shout out to the youtube watchers shout out to the people that are uh listening to the podcast while playing deathmatch shout out to the people that are listening in a car yeah should we shout anyone else out i queued into somebody <laughs> who just finished watching the last episode we did uh -huh. and he lost his shit 
What, that he met he, you? He, that he a met star? Brent, and I said, <laughs> don't panic too much. I'm a niche micro-internet celebrity. And then we won the game. <laughs> Damn, no, uh, that, that must have been the only win. We won the fucking game. <laughs> Hell yeah, yeah. That's, that must have been your important. only win of yesterday. Uh, no, that was like two days ago. Yesterday was abhorrent. Yesterday, the fucking AI was out to get me. The, my teammates <laughs> weren't real people. They weren't humans. <laughs> they just weren't fucking people. Right, guys, do you want to give your opinions on the Valorant clothing? I... Go on then. Go on then. Bring them up. Can bring we pull up. back up? I, I like thought it was the frog hat. And I, I, I like is... that. What what is this? How is J Balvin related to this? I don't get why he's tied. J Balvin. <laughs> no, I'm serious. <laughs> why why is J Balvin? Riot Games <laughs> partner with Network Live and J Balvin for this who, who Balvin? is who is, is a musical artist? artist. Uh, yeah. uh, is he's he involved good, yeah. in this? Uh, I, I mean, mean he's, he's, he's in the tweet, it. so surely. But where's where's the source? Where have Running Back got this from? <laughs> yeah. I mean, are they hooked into the API and the stats stuff? Skip. You brought yeah, the story I mean, to the to the podcast. I, I just this believe what I see segment. on the internet. I don't know. You uh, demanded we talk about this. Why? Are, I didn't demand at anything. I, I just thought you you know why it enjoys clothing. Why it enjoys Valorant. Maybe why yep. it'll have opinions about Valorant clothing. I enjoy uh, one of those I things. don't. I don't get it particularly. <laughs> but then who knows? I don't know what's going on. Okay, let me take. Let's take a close look and examine here. And I'm gonna try and. Kind of give a lot of a lot of detail here for, uh -huh. for the How audio is that listeners. a Killjoy beanie? I don't understand. That's a frog. That's a Lucio beanie. Um, oh my god, this guy's over. Is it like killed. a blizzard collab? What's going on there? <laughs> doesn't, she, <laughs> doesn't she have like a doesn't she Dude, have where like a is frog? That beanie? She doesn't wear a, one with eyes. She just she has does. a normal beanie, doesn't she? Dude, shout yeah. out to Billy Eyes. Kind of what normal. does Billy Eye how does she fit into the puzzle? Yeah. <laughs> what does she have to do with the merch drop? <laughs> And then, okay, and then there's like the hoodie. Guys, we're Wait, really killing this segment. Who is Milkman? <laughs> who is Milkman? Milk Milk That's my dad. Says, Jay Balvin and Milkman. They partnered with Milkman. Milkman. <laughs> Milkman. Uh, I don't, I'm not yeah, familiar I Googled, with Milkman. I Googled Milkman and I got <laughs> the modern Milkman. A convenience with a conscience. Order farm fresh groceries in plastic free packaging. So, I don't know. I don't have any information here. Would you buy it? Would would I but no, I wouldn't. But nice, uh, I'm frugal. Drop. That, that's and all I wanted from the segment, really. <laughs> Thanks. Dude, what all right. <laughs> what um, do you guys want to... Psychonauts? Psychonauts? No, I've never played Psychonauts, Kurt. But I have played Valorant. Do you guys want to talk about that game? Remember that one? I do. You've been playing a lot this week. Yeah. I've been seeing you out there giving it your all on the right service, bro. Uh, you shouldn't have. No. It was with the AIs. Um, all right, let's 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 get into the little recap of what's been going on in the scene. Um, Squirtle Squad and ORE Esports, the last two teams to qualify for NA Challengers, which starts on February first, I believe. Um, so now we do know all the teams, and then after this, we're gonna do a little power ranking. But for now, just gonna focus on Squirtle Squad and ORE. Um, Squirtle Squad made it through. The upper bracket beating ORE in that upper bracket final match, 2-0. Both matches were pretty close. And then ORE dropped down to the lower bracket, where they won the lower bracket final against Sonics, 2-1. Also a super close game. They went to OT on the last map. Walla, what are your thoughts? Came back from 9-3 as well, I think it was, on the last map. Crazy. Uh, showed some stuff that I hadn't seen from ORE before. Oregon Esports, my boys. Um, like I said, I, I expected these guys to qual. I think that they are, I mean, what, Jonah Six and Lear, these guys were up and coming last year, got picked up, and they've just been grinding, grinding, grinding. So happy to see them come through. Zaldris is freaking nasty. Um, and I think they've been playing together since November. So I actually think that they're a pretty solid squad and can do some damage in Challengers. Yeah. Kind of wild runs from Squirtle Squad and Sonics in the lower bracket as well, just tearing through... Some other teams that would have been, I don't know, a lot of people had uh, up there, right? They uh, they both went on pretty pretty wild streaks. Uh, none of us had Squirtle Squad making it out either. Nope. Yeah, none of none of us did. And I don't think. I mean, the, I'm I'm not sure if there was a lot of reason necessarily to believe in them, and I don't mean that in a negative way. Well, maybe I do, <laughs> but it, I mean, there was just, there was not a lot of reason to be over the moon about Squirtle Squad, but they, they really, 
turned up. Yeah. And uh, well, I, as far as I know, they're a relatively new team. Governor just switched to being the IGL. Um, it was kind of thrown together last minute, and then they came through and actually managed to qualify, which was pretty impressive. And I thought that their calling was good as well, um, like especially in that upper that upper bracket final against ORE. Um, like on Pearl, I, I thought that they were making the right adaptations at the right time to, to start winning rounds um, on that game. And then on Fracture, they just looked super clean. But I, I thought their mid-rounding was, was good. I thought they were making good adaptations. I was impressed uh, by that aspect of it. Also, Harmful was just super nasty in, in that series specifically. And on, on Pearl especially, he was nasty good on the Cypher. It used to be like Jet... Jetman, one of the million like good <laughs> tier two jets. Um, always looking super clean on 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 different roles. And then also, I I know there's a lot of a lot of hype around Adder at the moment. Their KO kind of flex player, and he definitely does look like a a, a solid upcoming player to me. He even in like this map that we're watching right now, which is the, the pro game against ORE. Like he was in a few clutch situations that he didn't win out, but you could see from his movements and his awareness of the game that he knew exactly how to win each scenario he was in. It was just a matter of like, okay, his crosshair was like a pixel off. So he, he missed the shot, but like he seems like a hyper aware player to me and, and someone that could definitely be doing some damage at a higher level and like, you know, by the end of this year, maybe heading into next year, something like that. Yep. Uh, I, I think so too. Um, I think one of the reasons people weren't like, uh, didn't have SS, uh, Squirtle Squad, I shouldn't say that, uh, on their radar was their like kind of early exit last time, but they lost to Dis Disguised and then they went out shortly after that. And like you said, it's a kind of, I mean, it's been mostly a pug team for like a long time. Governor's just been kind of picking people up and trying to make teams work, and finally, finally, it does at the last second. Um, and I think the mid round adaptation comes from that. To be honest, they have a lot of experienced players. I think people who have been grinding in competitive, like actually playing in in tier two and all of the open qualifiers and stuff like that. Um, so you you could see that come through because everybody has a massive amount of um, just freedom to make the plays that that end up winning them this map, for example, and um, closing out Fracture. I think this team needs will will have to work on you know being a little stable. Um, they can't end up getting poached or anything like that, and they need to start working on like actually making a big structure. Because for right now, it's a free agent team. I don't believe there's a coach. I don't think they're working with a with anybody right now, and they're going to be going up against you know the giga money and challengers so yeah. in order for them to really make waves and challengers they need to you know improve even further which is going to be tough i think for them yeah definitely i feel like that's kind of an issue with them and ore is that the, the both teams are sprinkled with some talent but it seems like talent that will likely get poached because i don't think the teams are necessarily complete enough or ready enough to compete with the high level challenger teams like you know, M80 and Guard, etc. right? Because um, yep. ORE have, like, flashes of looking good as a team. Like, they they had a lot of moments where they were able to combo utility nicely with what seemed like sometimes kind of on the fly, other times probably part of a set piece where they'd be retaking. Um, I, I think this is actually an example of that, like, where, where they were retaking on Beyond Pearl. They were just good at setting up little utility combos, like the stun, grab well, nade in good spots um stuff like that and on defense i felt like they were good at playing off of each other their positioning was good they were holding the right angles for each other they were swinging for each other effectively but then other times it just looked like they whoever i don't know who calls for the team but it looks like there were points where the team just hesitates and they didn't follow the call or they tried to call something off while they had already kind of begun enacting the plan and then they find themselves in these awkward spots where it just doesn't look like at all points they had like full confidence in the call and what they were trying to actually do. And it just resulted in some awkward round losses where that's just the rounds that are just never going to happen against, uh, like rounds like that will never be played rather by 
the high caliber teams like the guard, you know? Like if they have a plan, they're going to follow it up even if they end up losing because they lose the duels or whatever goes wrong. But, um, you know, some of these like low confidence rounds that you see from ORE, it's just, you just can't give anything like that up against the top level team. So worrying on that side, but also a lot of good talent on the roster and they have some of the fundamentals down. So could see them growing a bit, but it's, you know, a matter of will there be enough time and will players get poached? Kind of as much. I wanted to pick your brains as well, just thinking about that too. Do you think there'll be a larger discrepancy between, even if we just take the North American side of things, um, do you think there'll be a larger discrepancy between the top teams in challenges and the bottom in challenges or the top teams in like the America's League and the bottom teams in the America's League? Because... I feel like That's a great I feel question. like there's going to be that I feel like there's going to be question. a big skill disparity or not just skill I think skill is the wrong way of putting it but um a, a, a um performance disparity in this challenges level like I feel like the 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 teams at the top with big organizations that have players with tons of experience that barely missed out on the the premier level you know all of that kind of stuff that we're talking about with let's say the guard for example there's going to be a big skill discrepancy between those teams and the teams below them but the 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 partnership system is also going to have some teams that just don't have investment that give up halfway through the season because they realize it's all over they're they're kind of locked into their contract for the entire year i mean we've seen before in the like overwatch league system there are massive disparities between the top and the bottom teams in those partnered systems but i feel like the the, the challenger level is also going to be like that because teams are locked into quite a heavy degree it's going to be weird are you talking from like the players perspective people end up like giving up halfway through the season or yeah, no i mean the... like i mean like from from a team overall i don't mean that each individual player like loses motivation and they just fucking give up and start throwing but i just mean yeah. that yeah. you know if you're a player and you lose consistently for the first like split and then you realize our season's basically over. There's very little chance we're making playoffs. If we do, we're in the lowest seed. We'd have to claw all our way back. Like, it's so difficult for us to be able to make it. You just naturally have, like... Yeah. A, it, it's more difficult to drum up all of that effort that you need to put in to be the best in the world. Yeah. Uh, I think it'll be a bigger problem. Uh, like, there'll be a bigger skill discrepancy, actually, in, the like, the VRLs um, compared to this. Because I think, uh, well, we have four qualified teams in NA. And then they're they're literally playing against some like really really good teams, but I think they're all see it as an opportunity to get to get better um, rather than anything else, and they are locked in, um, which is nice. Whereas the VRLs, dude, there's only like one team who who qualified, or if if that, and the rest of them are invited, so you're gonna have a bunch of teams who are just like not made properly. Compared to mm -hmm. here, I think these teams at least they have some core with them. You know, they sure, have some sure. basis to why they're there. Um, yeah. So I don't think it's going to be as big of a problem in NA. Uh, yeah. And I, I would argue that the America's League will probably have a bigger discrepancy. You think so? I, I, I see. I'm leaning to. I, I think comparing NA to NA, I think challengers might have a bigger discrepancy because the bottom tier teams aren't even signed. And if you end up in a situation where one of the low tier unsigned teams, like, oh well, uh, why don't we just pick up one of their players and then one of their star players gets poached to one of the better teams and they have to find a replacement and they're still unsigned. Yeah, that, that team could just get screwed. Teams over. Yeah, they could but get surely screwed. Orgs, because surely the Orgs will be teams... interested in signing these kind of teams, yeah, right? I, I, like, in NA a squad really squad's not going to stay unsigned for that long, surely. Probably I, I mean, not. Shit. We'll see. If, the, like, if like the Nation or one of those teams qualified, for sure there would be interest in them. But um, maybe, maybe not. I do think that there's probably more interest in trying to find you know, support for these teams than anything else. And by the way, Oregon Esports or ORA Sports is actually like an Indian org or something like that. I don't know what the fuck. Oh, really? Yeah, it's really? an Indian org um, somehow associated with the team. Uh, maybe just like a little bit of a sponsorship or something like that. But um, yeah, I, I would I would argue that NA, as people who are interested in getting back in or um, or smaller orgs as well who want to want to get in as well. It's just... The prices are probably pretty expensive and hard to do anything with. I mean, fuck, Disguised has made a team for this team. For this, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, the salaries the, um, are crazy, and you would have to... I mean, a lot of the orgs that would be getting in on that low level would just be hoping that they're signing a player that they could flip. Like, that, that would, I imagine, be the hope for some orgs interested in getting in because it's unlikely yeah. that the team will actually win and qualify. Speaking of um, India, 
You guys seen Aaron's latest video that he posted on Twitter? <laughs> what did Aaron know? What, what did he, what did he play post? Play sound. What is it? You should play it with sound. <laughs> what, what's, <laughs> you play, what's going on? You should play it with sound, and I just want to see everybody's reactions to it. <laughs> okay. It's a very short, very, very short clip. Aaron, the player for Global Esports, mm -hmm. right? the team that has 10 players. And it, it should be like five seconds long, on. the clip. <laughs> this is... This is concerning me. This one? No, 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 no. This is not this Wait, I don't know what this that is, one. though. I want to watch it, though. What is this? Global are cooking. I wonder who would cheer for us. N-A-E-U-O-C. What is this? I think the idea is... Because they have... It's because they have players from everywhere. Yeah. So it's like... That's... That's no. very funny, though, that it's like, yeah, no pressure. The entire world is rooting for us. Meanwhile, yeah. expectations for global are actually really quite low. Oh, no, this is, this is an old clip. There shouldn't be that clip. much pressure on them. This is an old clip. No, there shouldn't. Who has more players now, Global Esports or EG? I see EG signing a new player every day. They're up to nine. EG are up to nine, but they said they were going to sign ten. So the tenth must just be waiting for the ink to dry, I think. Right, <laughs> surely. Um, did you guys see the, uh, the like, OR winning moment? This is, don't take your headphones off if you haven't seen it. <laughs> it's loud. This is, yeah, this is, a, is loud. Loud warning yeah. um, from the comeback on Bind. Also, that comeback on Bind, I have to say, like, the, the fact that they were able to do that in the lower bracket after, I feel like, playing without a lot of confidence against Squirtle Squad or, uh, um, and some hesitation is an impressive turnaround in itself, honestly, to be able to, to come back and, and win that game back in OT. I'm, yeah, I'm, ready. I'm ready for this clip. This yeah. Just hold her here. Hold her here. He's gonna lower. walk on us and fight us. I promise. Yep. Hold. Hold, just hold, just hold, just hold. She comes out. One enemy I think! No! Let's go! Fuck him! Let's go! Yes! Yes! Let's go! <laughs> mildly excited. Yeah, that's yeah. I mean that's pretty sick. Mild excited. You took that's... that with your headphones on, Josh. God damn. Yeah, I, I just took it full force to the cranium. I've taken psychic <laughs> damage permanently. It's so <laughs> awesome seeing stuff like that, or I suppose hearing stuff like that. And see seeing the players and like feeling the 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 cathartic release where you realize that everything you've been working for recently has paid off and you're yeah. into the next tier and you're kind of locked in that that is what's great about the system right is that these players have genuinely accomplished something excellent by getting into the system now and they're protected for a little while but man it makes me sad looking at tweets like uh, calypso's tweet recently too where he tweeted out like i tried my hardest but I, je I guess it's just not meant to be who knows what the future holds it's like you know real real like sad boy hours for the for the players that have just missed out by a small inch and now don't have any idea about what what they're going to be doing i think that team is still sticking around the nearest airport team um but the, there's a lot of players that are in this kind of position and then i was also thinking about sonics making that crazy run yeah. through the lower bracket for from an organizational point of view an org that took a chance on that like aussie team way back was slowly just working the roster to be more and more north american focused and has gone you know completely away from where it started uh, in what was that 2020 or something and this is like that it feels like that their final shot to get into something and really be notable for anything other than being a home for the Australian players and they missed out by an inch after making a crazy good run through the lower bracket so uh, who knows what those kind of orgs are going to do that were I mean, so all those dollar. players by the way yeah, yeah all those players just within an hour posted LFT on Sonics yeah. after losing barely just, yeah. uh, it sucks it my is honest tragic. reaction to not having a second qualifier mm -hmm. it's just I'm not going on that rant again. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not doing it again. I'm not doing it again, but there should be a second qualifier. Let's power rank the challenger teams. Let's Ooh. do it. We're power Ooh, ranking. Fast. The God Ooh, we got ball. You see that ball? I got excited. <laughs> ball is into it now. Um, we're going to power rank the NA challenger teams as that is starting this coming week or next week. I, I think exactly I one week from today.
Yeah, I was about to troll me, and it's going to be a Jersey power ranking or some stupid <laughs> shit, I swear <laughs> No, 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 no. We're not doing... No, 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 no. Okay. No, no, no. Okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> we're, doing a, we're doing a real power ranking ball. <laughs> no jerseys involved. Um, all right. Here we go, baby. We got all 12 teams in NA Challengers. And oh, oh, hold on. Mm. I, before we start this... I want to do the criteria here, okay? So we're all just on the same page. We're not arguing bullshit. I've had enough of the, I've had enough of the bullshit semantics, okay. Brent. Number okay. one, it's... how good the logo looks. <laughs> disguise so disguise, 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 squad, disguise squad. Squirtle Squad. Yep. Squirtle um, Squad's actually goated, though. I will yep. be so sad if they get picked up by an org. <laughs> <laughs> that, shit. That, yeah, that, that, I'm That's not gonna lie. Fucking... Out of out of all the fucking team names and team logos, is very good. <laughs> it's very good. Um, I I would like to do this on on just you know the power, simply the power <laughs> that we're witnessing. Okay. How we yeah, feel their power, the power level. Yeah, the power. Yeah, it's a power ranking. All right, okay. I I want to rank the power. I don't want to rank. Oh, are they gonna finish? Fuck that. Power. Pull it back up, Curtis. <laughs> All right. Okay. No, um, no potential, right? No potential. Just fucking power. Just, just fucking pure power. Pow, pure power. Yeah. Okay. Um, number one. I mean, pure, pure power guard, surely, guard. right? I, I mean, mean, they, who do you think else? Who, who else could it be? Sorry, they must be, top two. <laughs> um, <laughs> it must be top two. <laughs> um, There's one guy over here. I'm going off of vibes. You're cool. Okay, so... <laughs> Okay, so do you, okay, so hey, you've been sitting right next to me, and remember when I said the criteria, and I said the criteria is power, yeah, yeah, and yeah, you immediately yeah. changed yeah. the criteria uh, to some bullshit. Just right? me, though. But I, I'm gonna go with vibes. I'm gonna go with vibes. You three can do like analysis, power, like you can do power. I'll, I want to do vibes. I mean, I'm Brent. This is not why we're the number one. And podcast I'd like you to take America. 25. This is I'd like, not. Why I'd we're like the my opinion to be held with equal weight to each of yours. <laughs> Okay, so what? So who's this the vibiest? The uh, phase, because <laughs> Dicey is currently sixteen and three in the Tarek ten man tournament leaderboards. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, phase, I'm on Wyatt's phase side. Phase are winning it all. <sighs> Number one. I mean, honestly, I'm gonna no. keep it a, 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 a trillion. I don't think guessing phase and num. I don't think phase number one is actually that crazy. It's oh, not insane, but. It's but that. the the, the team that. hasn't it's changed too much, and they weren't at that kind of level consistently last year to be able to get over the top of a team like the guard, right? I don't, I just don't see them doing it for an entire year. They were getting really good though towards the end. Yeah. I thought they were really I think strong. Though Faze should have a high placement, but Brent on the vibes, it can't be on the vibes just because Dicey Faze is bank is about to be bankrupt. This yeah. team hasn't made any changes. Yeah, None yeah, of their yeah. players the got picked up for partnerships. Rough. The stock market is it's looking it's rough. Below a dollar now. Right now. Yeah, I might yeah. buy in. I just mean, take we're a shot. <laughs> into a session. I'm, I'm just take saying. A shot. I I think the way that FaZe handled the offseason, and by the way, their roster is still not announced. We don't know who their fifth player is. Yeah. Um, uh, I yeah, think that reading between the lines, you should probably think that the vibes for the team specifically are probably pretty damn low. Oh, what if That's they got Stewie 2K? Because they need they a could have Stewie they, 2K. They need they, like a they could also have initiator guy. Um, his Rossi. They could also have Rossi, who also got uh, signed. Can you can you remind me what the deal even was with FaZe? Because well, I can't even remember what the current status of that team is. It's everybody minus Flyer, because Flyer's playing for Breakthrough. Yeah. Um, right, right. And supposedly, like, he, I don't know if he could get out of his contract or whatever, but he's playing for Breakthrough and FA team. And um, they were potentially going to sign, like, Neptune or somebody like that, former Rise player. Yeah. But... He just said he was looking for a team, so I don't, I don't know. Maybe that fell through. I don't know. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I, to me, there's to me, Garda number one, and then your second place team is M80, looking like M80, right? Or Shopify. I mean, sure. I was gonna throw G2 into the mix Are as well because I'm, I'm actually. Phase, or phase, phase, or disguise, total no, squad. No, I don't think phase. Fa I don't think phase are good enough to get into a top two spot either. With so you much. You think so? Dog, TSM? I, I what, where's, what, TSM is six? Okay, um, whoa, we, we, haven't we haven't moved them yet, Brent. Bro, you TSM up there, dog. <laughs> Hold on, can we, can, can everyone, 
Can we all relax here for a second? Hey, everyone's throwing names we're, out we're here, just, man. We're just, saying, we're just saying names. We're just saying names. Okay. okay. The God? Number one. <laughs> and I, Brent, don't you dare say otherwise. <laughs> they are number one. They are number one. I like the God at number one. Okay. I'm happy with that. Go I think the glad. vibes of the God are pretty nice. You yeah. Know? That's, I'm glad you've noticed that. Yeah, <laughs> about the their vibes vibe. are good. I've checked in on the vibes. They are good. Number two. Okay, clearly we have a lot of candidates for number two. Okay, so we're gonna do this in we're gonna do this in democratic fashion. Okay, we're gonna go around. Uh, we're going back to the talking pillow. I'm gonna get out the talking pillow and I'm gonna hand it to each of you, and you're all gonna give me your vote for number two, and then we'll discuss. Okay, Bala, I'm handing you the talking pillow. Okay, can I see the rankings? I I think the top three should be. The guard, M80, and Shopify. Um, personally, I think Phase sits somewhere around the, the fourth to six with G2 involved. TSM probably there too. And then, just these are my unfeathered opinions about like how I'm thinking about this. I think Breakthrough and Disguise should be the top of the open qualifier teams, and potentially one of those guys can move within the fourth to sixth spot. I think that is reasonable. Josh, here's the talking pillow. <laughs> I I think M80 looks the talking like pillow. Sorry, I'm not laughing at the to I'm not laughing at the talking pillow. I'm not scoffing at the talking title. pillow. Do I have the talking pillow bottle yeah, under yeah, you? You have the talking pillow. You have the Sorry. talking pillow. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Can we stop the cross talk here? Sorry. I'm thinking M80 look like the roster with the most um the most power on their roster right now with power. the with the most, <laughs> the, the criteria was power. I don't like this criteria, you know the criteria <laughs> for the ranking. Sideshow has the talking pillow. Yeah, talking shut, pillow. Let him talk. I'll go shut up. <laughs> Dude, Josh. The core of the roster piece. being Ghost. I was very uh, happy with how Ghost were playing last season. I know that they actually didn't go as deep in the like playoffs, for example, as some of the cores of the teams that we're ranking them against. But I think that the way that they were playing was excellent. And I think that this team with, you know, the addition of Xander and EU, they're just going to look better. I think that they're looking good for the number two spot. Bala, Bala, I see a hand raised. You can have, can the, I have talking the talking pillow? pillow. Yeah, what do you want to say, Bala? The core of Ghost is also kind of on breakthrough now, and you might be rating them because of some of their really good players who were on Ghost, um, namely Brock and John QT. So I think you maybe should slightly reconsider, but I do agree overall, power pretty good. If that's the case, though, why are you not rating Shopify as high as that? Because Shopify's because... power should be like probably similar, if not better, especially with the Ghost lost players. Okay. Well, I, Ghost's lost players is just Brock, isn't it? Playing with John Breakthrough. Q2. I thought John Cutie was on a M80. Am I trolling? Isn't what? On John Q oh, no, not John, John Cutie's on a proto, a proto. Sorry. Oh, a proto. Yeah. Right, a proto. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Alexander yeah. Protopoulos. But I, I don't know. I, I actually, I, I still love the roster for it's M80. Amazing. I think it's got extremely good uh, players on it. And uh, unless you've got, I mean, John Cutie was the caller for the team as well, right? So I feel like Nismo was their best player. John Cutie's the caller. I feel like you've got most of the core there. I mean, Broke was a great clutcher as well and Proto's a great sight anchor, but I feel like you're still going to be able to have that. Xander's an incredible sight anchor. He's probably better than a Proto uh, as a like-for-like -like sight anchor kind of um, comparison, even though a Proto's fantastic. So I, I'm not really worried about them losing pieces of that ghost core, if you want to put it like that. And yeah, I think if you were to just directly compare the Shopify Rebellion like success that they'd had as LG from last year and assume that they're going to do exactly the same. You, you, you'd have to rate Shopify Rebellion high. But I think that this... I, I was always more impressed with the way... I know that this doesn't bear out in the results, but I was always more impressed with the approach that Ghost had and the players that they had. And I think that it was a lack of experience that didn't allow that to translate when it came to stuff like their performance in the playoffs. I, I think what we saw from them over that year, to me, looked better uh, even though the results didn't bear that out towards the, the end of the, the playoffs or whatever. It was actually the LG guys getting the, the better wins. I think Shopify Rebellion should be up there, but I don't think that a team like Shopify is necessarily above like a G2. G2 are one of the teams that I'm interested in. I'm not going not gonna to keep ranting, but G2 with the addition of Whippy and Oxy, that's looking fairly good to me.
Like, that is looking like a roster that can actually do something. Josh, I, okay, hold on. I agree with M80 and two. I'm fine with that. Bren looks like he's fiending for the talking pillow right now. Where is the talking pillow? Okay, <laughs> you can, Bren, you have the, you, I will give you the talking Vibe, pillow. Vibe, okay. What, what are your thoughts? M80? Uh-huh. They got some chill vibes, I think, going on. Okay. When you, you go on Xander's stream, it's effortless, you know? <laughs> he attracts, he, he's like a certain yep. energy about him. He's not trying too hard with it. Yeah. You know, that I quite like. Unspoken. Yeah. Yeah, uns, it's unspoken vibes. I don't yeah. know. S S uh, Shopify, I don't like. Because they, <laughs> when I, I don't like their name. They, they, uh, whenever I, we were doing a watch party of them, I always fucking say Spotify. <laughs> and so their fucking name is I I hate it I hate I hate so the fact that it's Shopify like the name. I always say Spotify Rebellion instead yep. makes me look like a fucking fool so I don't like the name I want to deduct points based off of that okay. you can't deduct I don't, points no, Brent, you, no surely points. not I shouldn't have given Bren that Delta 8 gum before the show <laughs> and Bren you're getting very close to having 0% value with anything you say no no no, no. listen listen I mean you're correct but also I need 25% of, I need, I need, I need 25% weight with everything I'm saying here. Yeah. Right, right. Well, okay. thankfully, the rest of us don't agree with you, so you ruled out this one. <laughs> try should, like, try and pick a fight well, where right, someone's on your side. I'm Put locking, TSM up there. Put I'm, TSM up there. Hold on, I'm taking me at the talking pillow. I'm locking, all right, I'm locking in M80 at two. They yeah, have, I like M80 The too. roster's stacked as fuck. They have power. They got a lot of it. <laughs> a lot, a whole lot of power on that roster. When you're power. talking power, they've got fucking power. Number three, I don't particularly think Shopify Rebellion are that powerful. Shit name. Okay, Bren, who has a talking pillow? I don't think they're that... I don't think they're particularly powerful. They're good. Okay, I think they're good and they'll have a top finish, but I'm feeling more of like a number four for them. I, this well, is where it, it's really three, tough here. This, this third through six is really tough. I feel like there's, there's like six teams you could have. Third through six. I can give you the exact me, placements of where people are going to land. Okay, I'm going to give it to Josh. <laughs> Josh, <laughs> what, what do you think? <laughs> I was going to say, to me, Shopify almost have to be your default third pick because no. while there's teams underneath them that could punch up, the, there's teams like, okay, you've got, you've got FaZe, you've got G2, you've got TSM. I think, to me, those are the three teams that, like, I think our top six is in the right, the, they're the right teams. It just might be that the order's a bit off. Uh, but the... To me, Shopify have got all of that um, stability from last year. They've, I know it was only in the like Knights tournament, but they have beaten, you know, like a TSM recently that were, yeah, it's like playing really weird comps and shit like that. But they, then they're clearly able to hang with those kind of teams. I feel like people always forget how good B Dog is when they look at this roster. I feel like LG and now. Shopify suffer from this like boring stigma where people look at the team and they're just like, eh, it doesn't really, doesn't really excite me. But B dogs are a fucking demon, mm -hmm. and the, my 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 inkling for like Faze getting above them, yeah, I think Faze could absolutely get above them, but we don't really know what their team looks like, and they've been such an up and down team in the past too, where they basically only win if Baby Bay and Dicey are killing everybody, and there's no chamber in the meta anymore, right. so I Lack just don't. The lack of chamber see that. could damage them significantly because they really at times were just carried by the immense frag output. The infinite frag generator of Baby Bay and Dicey won them a lot of games. Mm -hmm. And later on, like, Poise was really impressive on that team. If you guys remember, like, late in yeah. their run, he was going fucking crazy on KO. But, so, like, that, that's the kind of thing I'm looking at where I still want to... I, I still have them... Highly ranked, but yeah, the lack of chamber could definitely hurt them. But do it you, could so be above it, G two. I don't know where to rank G two. Yeah, think... that's a tough one. Do you think Shopify would beat G two right now? Like, do you think they're they're just yes. they're a stronger team? Yeah, yeah. They, have, they yes. have they have more um, time together. Uh, G two is uh, not only is it uh, you know barely a core, but also they're bringing in. Who, Oxy, I guess, as well, who has some experience playing, uh, but not at this high a level. You know what I mean? And have we really seen the level of uh, building a player or developing talent from Shazam and, well, maybe Emmy? You could definitely say Emmy has a, has a, 
a uh, good track record of that, especially on V1. But do you have that proof like you have for other people, like Valen or MC or maybe, you know, Steel or something like that? Like, do you have that track record? I don't necessarily think that's there yet, so I don't know if it's going to fully work together. And also, you're literally, you're, you're merging two different ideologies, I think, almost entirely with, with V1 and, you know, the old the Shazam, um, which yeah, I think is but... potentially going to be a clash. V1 kind of has to win that, doesn't it? I mean, they're, they're just bringing much better ideas to the table, and they're bringing... Yeah, but then you have Shazam. Proven... I mean, Shazam is the, the is the IGL. He's going to be the guy who's actually using and implementing it. So it's... Yeah, but I don't think Shaz has got an, an ego on him where he wouldn't want to work within Imi's system. He, he's been losing for a while. I, I, I don't really see too much friction developing there, personally, but who knows? Well, I'm, not, I'm not calling it friction or anything like that. I'm just saying how how do you as an igl you actually have to be implementing those ideas and yeah he hasn't had the opportunity to be really be doing that or working in a system like that um so he's going to have not only an adjustment period as well but he's still going to be juggling multiple things i think in this in this case um okay. so I mean, I, G, yeah so you guys I, think, I think shopify would be g2 yes Is that i think so right now yeah i think okay you know, if you're going to judge it by like, oh, the, the potential or whatever, then maybe you could rank G2 higher. But I think, I think Shopify are a safer bet, frankly. You think they beat, I mean, there's so many good teams. You think they beat TSM? Who? A close game, Shopify yeah. or G2? Who are we talking about here? Shopify. Do Shopify beat TSM? No. Yeah, I think so. No. <laughs> you I, are just I, I not sold on Shopify than, at all. G2. TSM beat them. Go ahead, man. TSM no, clears. Didn't. They clear no, they Shopify. Didn't, they didn't beat them. What are you talking about? Yes, I think he's using potential future tense. <laughs> like, we'll beat them right. in this hypothetical universe. Right. I mean, I, I, I could the definitely... T TSM are going to be a gatekeeper team. When I look at TSM, they've got the ability to keep down the teams that don't really know what's going on. But when you... When TSM... The, the gap between TSM and teams like... The guard, in terms of how reactively they're playing, how quick they are, the game plan they come in with, uh, it's it's just tighter. The TSM is going to be a gatekeeper team. I don't know where the gate is exactly going to be, whether they're going to gatekeep the top five or whether they're going to gatekeep the top, you know, top whatever. But there's going to, I think TSM are going to be the tier breaker between the upper tier and then the tier that doesn't really have a hope of winning playoffs. Yeah. That's where I see TSM residing. I, I am I'm good with locking in Shopify at three. Y'all good with that? Hey, but yes. I don't have much yep. say here, do I? <laughs> I, mean, well, I mean, you do. You have equal say. We all no, have equal say. I don't have much say here. We do all I? have twenty five percent of the say. <laughs> okay. I don't know what wow. to tell you. Um, okay, so we have guard one, M eighty two, Shopify three, number four. Again, this is tough. So options like are TSM phase G two, disguised maybe breakthrough maybe. Who do you like, Brian? I, I, I like I like TSM. Yeah, at number four. I feel like that's kind of a safe bet, honestly. I think I think the Tarek Ludwig Invitational, small little, small little tiny sample size from that. But yep. what that showcased to me is that the team was what it reminded me of was like Hayes wrangling a bunch of like overexcited children, and that's what the team is. And I think over a longer period of time, they showed the ability to learn for one. They showed the ability to listen at times, and so. I think the team will develop quite nicely into a real top contender. Yeah. That's, that's my expectation. <laughs> you really are describing that like they're a bunch of preschoolers. They, well, that's learning, what it felt like. They're, they're that's what it felt like. They're learning to listen and like, yeah, just... Like a bunch of like giggling kids yeah. and then Hayes is there um, with his beard and he's like, oh, what's up, guys? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think, uh, I think TSM 4th is pretty... Uh, honestly, I think I would take that right now. I feel like that's a safe bet because I don't know the phase 5th. G2... I think we'll be good, but it's how Josh, good. Josh's uh, opinion of the gatekeeper not... team, I'm expecting to be G2. Mm, so they don't, G2 they're not gonna. Really. I don't. I don't know that they're gonna have the consistency to be a gatekeeper team. In order to be a gatekeeper team, you have to be consistently beating the people below you, and you know, co consistently having chances, but not really quite beating the teams above you. To me, G2 is the kind of team that I could see being a bit messy at times, but when they're on being up like contesting the top three teams i think g2 are going to be it's not wildly inconsistent as a detrimental thing to attach to them and i don't mean it as a label of like these guys are going to be bad because they're inconsistent but i think that they're going to have 
a bit like FaZe, some really high highs if they can get their shit together and it's still going to be a bit wobbly because they've got the challenge of integrating different parts and figuring out a system that works and um, whether or not Penny's going to be firing on all cylinders because we've seen actually that that guy can be fairly wildly inconsistent depending on whether, I guess, like he understands what the team system around him is doing or his individual level at, uh, during certain splits too. I just don't see... I, I kind of believe in the G2 idea because I believe in uh, Immy and I think that... I, I believe in Immy, I believe in Whippy and I think that the um, the old Sentinels players still have a lot to learn and will be uh, wanting to redeem themselves. I, I, I think that the peaks of G2 and FaZe are going to be higher than TSM. Whether or not that's going to last all season is way up for debate and I could see TSM being ranked higher than them at the end of the year just by virtue of being consistent. But... I do think at various times throughout the year, FaZe and G2 are going to look significantly better than TSM. I think they, they just might be a bit more up at and At various down. times. I agree with that, yeah. I yeah. agree with that. Yeah. It might be like, you know, spin. a couple of weeks. It might be four weeks <clears throat> out of the nine or something. But for some period of time, FaZe and G2 are going to look really sick. And then they're not going to look as great uh, at various other parts of the year. I, I think that yeah, just that just comes down to where you want to power rank them, I yeah, think. we've but... never gotten any of these preds wrong before. So. I'm rolling. <laughs> I think that's, yeah, I think that's quite safe from you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This guy's hating. <laughs> um, I'm, all right, so if you guys want to lock in phase at fifth and G2 at uh, sixth. I have an, an inquiry. I would put G2 above you have an inquiry? Phase. What, about what? Well, I don't want to interrupt Parla. No, I, my, it was just a question. I mean, it was just a statement. Go ahead and inquire. Um, when we were reviewing our power rankings, yeah, there was a consistent trend. <laughs> what was that? Wasn't it the second team that we ranked one? No. Uh, what do you mean? The team that we no, always we put ranked in second. Optic in first at Reykjavik. And they won. Right, but I think wasn't the exception of it, the, the, the team we ranked as number one usually didn't do as well. Okay, so Copenhagen we ranked um, Optic again. Optic again. And we ranked Loud like fourth or something. Yeah. I don't remember who we put second. Probably Fnatic. Uh, but we didn't put FPX even anywhere close. And we didn't when, put when FPX in like sixth. There was like, there was, a, there was, there's a, there's a pattern. Then, there was a pattern here. Brendan, the pattern, pattern was, we kept I, you're, thinking you're just, of you're, just, I think you're seeing things. <laughs> there was a pattern. You, are, you probably would have remembered like, it. Cause there was a pattern, guys. There was a pattern. I swear to God, there was a pattern. Okay. This guy's going like, fucking off the rails. The He's second like, team. What is, what is your point? The second team, <laughs> Josh. Like, the second Jesus. team was. This guy's off the they rails. won, I think. Didn't so they? what are you saying? Are you saying MAT are going to win? Do you I want us to drop the gun in the second so that they win? What's your point? No, no, no. Put the, reverse it. When we finalize this, all you I'm saying are... is we need to get this fucking pattern and invert <laughs> the final pattern? results based There's on no it. There's no pattern. There's a pattern there, man. There's, There's a pattern no pattern. There's no fucking Nick Cage and knowing ass Bro. looking for the pattern. There's, There's no pattern. pattern. I'm going to look There's... this up while you guys discuss <laughs> the There's six no to 12. pattern. There's a pattern. <laughs> 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 Runs off the rails. Oh, <laughs> maniac onto the show. <laughs> We've brought a maniac onto the show. Um, we should have done that. We should have done I that line of coke in the bathroom. Um, <laughs> what are we? <laughs> wait, where, where are we at? I can't put phase above G two when uh, when you think meta wise, uh, Dapper is going to be back on playing a Sentinel probably instead of. Oh, actually, Whippy might have a say to do something to do with that. But um, either way, phase is downgrading. I think for sure. Um, we'll see how Dicey can do. He's looking pretty good on his own, but I don't know what this team is going to look like. And also, we don't know what their fifth is like, too. Also, do but, they have a coach? I don't think they have a coach right now. Who, FaZe? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't feel like, like they're the kind Rockets. of team that needs one. If, if any... <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. Maybe. They're not the kind of team that needs one. They just run at you anyway. I mean, fuck it. <laughs> right? They fucking lean into it. What, what bothers me about putting FaZe at six, though, is that if you look at last year, um, when they were in the, uh, what, stage two, they finished third behind Optic and Xset, who both went to Masters. They just missed out, you know, by one spot. LCQ, they finished third, too. Yeah, and then LCQ, they finished third, too. Uh, they, they did perform well. I agree with all of the reasoning behind why I think they're going to slip a little bit and why we shouldn't be as confident, but uh, I don't know. Can't... Is there no way where they're going to be able to put Dicey onto another big fragging roll and just get crazy value out of them is. again and beat people? 
I just yeah. don't think he'll be as flexible, especially given the map pool right now. Having a lot of raised maps is potentially going to be an issue because he has to. I mean, I mean, for me to put him on a fragging roll, you're you're thinking of putting him on jet on the jet maps that there are, and there's not as much right now. Yeah, if, if it was Maybe up to me, to. if it was up to me, I'd bump TSM down to sixth and just move G two and phase up one spot. But I think it's I think it's you bumped who sorry TSM. No, I'd bump TSM down to sixth and move G two and phase up one spot. Ah. So you've got phase in the top five. But I think that I think six might just be underrating them a little bit. But uh, I I do agree with your reasons as to why they would drop down. So I'm not too bothered about it. I I also like if I was ranking TSM without the knowledge of Tarek Ludwig, which I think is a really bad data point to actually look out for them. Even though they played, I think like just recency bias and the fact that we've seen them um helping them be this high even though they had some good points they also had some bad at that event as well so like i'm trying to balance my my thoughts around them yeah. with that and it's really hard because i haven't seen any of these other teams right exactly right. that's it's really lopsided data that we have to work with Here, yeah. here's a question maybe we to we, we can think about this for a second and and think about this question are we are we really putting all of the invited teams in the top half and all of the open qualifier teams in the bottom half is that actually the case no. because i feel like there's no here's the thing well i don't think i think it's extremely unlikely that that ends up being the case and i think that breakthrough and either breakthrough in disguise or possibly both of them would be able to make it into the top half mm -hmm. um both those teams are really strong stacked with good players I could definitely see them managing to make it in the top half, but who do you bring down from the top half? This is the question. Um, well, I, mean, I think I, it's going to be it's going to be one of the teams that fails, right? I, that, that's the thing. I don't think it's unreasonable to rank all of these top six teams as top six because I think the the idea of the project, the like the what you can see from them, seems solid. But for a team like G two, they definitely can do super well. Like they they've got a great idea here. I think with this roster. But for any of the reasons that Barla brought up earlier, early, earlier, sorry, yeah. they could end up massively underperforming expectations. They drop down into like ninth, and suddenly you know breakthrough are up in fifth, something like that. I mean that, but but to to do that in a power ranking, you have to be confident that the worst end is gonna come out of one of these uh, invited teams. And the, the reason that the teams are invited is mostly because they've either got pre-existing cores, which is going to make them play better, at least for the beginning of the year, you've got to imagine, or that they've got, like, kind of stacked players, and that is also one of the reasons that we would be excited about a team and put them up. Like, the invited teams aren't just there because they've got clout. They, you know, the two, the two are actually somewhat aligned. <laughs> the, yeah. the big orgs are with them because they've had success with them. Yeah, Absolutely. I mean, it doesn't seem unreasonable on paper. It's just unlikely that that will be the exact yeah, case. But, but we also... are gauging probabilities, right? We're gauging yeah, exactly. power. Yeah, we're rating power. Mean? And the G2 and phase power seems quite strong. Bren, do you what, want to say something? I'm revealing the pattern at the okay. end of this power ranking. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Just to see if we... That's what, I've, that's what I've we just been doing. The pattern. For five minutes, uh -huh. I've been gathering the plus-minus differentials between different different thing i've got it in my fucking head okay of what okay. the plus minus differentials okay um all right so we have first the guard second m80 third shopify four tsm five g2 six phase seven surely it has to be disguised or breakthrough at this point right yes um, i like breakthrough a bit better personally. i like disguised a bit better because of the logo and gangster <laughs> okay that's okay so we have one and one <laughs> Bolo, who are you picking <laughs> Um, I think I go with disguised. Let's uh, go. Break breakthrough. I think we're really nasty, and I think Brock uh, is insane. I think I, that's one of the reasons I like. I really want to rate this team. Um, but for me, disguised like was surprisingly and sneaky good after they started like getting over the early round jitters where they were like losing a couple maps to random teams. Like they looked insane after that, um, and part of it was clear just being fucking insane uh, in like pistol rounds and just in general, like just finding insane multi kills. Um, mid rounding good, breakthrough. I'm, I I I almost want to say that some of the stuff they were doing to get through 
was slightly gimmicky with the way they were playing with a proto and and brock together and the odin spam and shit like it was fucking insane but yeah i, I think overall the skies are gonna have a better structure and should be improving and probably is improved at this point too mm. is that you putting a lot of weight into like steel making the roster better as well over time uh yes yes for sure Still oh, also well, looked well. looked good in this in this qualifier as well. Much better than I thought he would. Yeah. I, I really feel like those two teams have serious shots of breaking in to the like fourth, fifth, six uh sorry, fifth, sixth, seventh. Wait, no, no, no. Sorry, Let me get this saying? right. Those two teams have great shots of overtaking the fourth, fifth, sixth level teams. Right, breaking yes. into the top the top uh Breaking into yeah. the top five, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Disguised and Breakthrough have some serious chances of breaking into the top five. I'm tempted to rate them over phase, but I, I'm, I feel I fear a little bit that we might be um, just pushing phase way too far down the rankings no, 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 on no, the no, basis of here. not hearing anything about the team. Leave this here. This is fitting quite nicely into the pattern. <laughs> so just leave it for now, honestly. If you're happy with Disguised, it's, uh, Kurt has to be the... the, the, the Judicator. No, Wyatt's going to be back in a sec. No. Why would I be the Judicator? Wyatt is not going to be back for a sec. He said, Bren, take the reins. Yeah, he has so to unfortunately, a, he has you're to under my control break. here. So, oh, wonderful. I'm giving okay. it to Kurt to decide to disguise what, the breakthrough. What I would like to do real quick is uh, throw some tear breaks in here to give it a little bit of uh, a... Yeah. You know, break things up a little bit. I think there's a tear break below Shopify, in my yeah, opinion. Top three and then six or something like that. Yeah, and um, then... I Honestly, say, I think the tier break might be under eight. eight. Yeah, maybe yeah under I think eight. under eight, because that's where I think these teams are going to be trading wins against each other. Yeah. I think there might just be three tiers. There, there might be four tiers with, like, a couple of really bad teams that just get, you know, like Wyatt was saying earlier, just get poached, and then they just fall to pieces. But we'll, we'll just... We'll, halfway through the season, we'll just have a little RIP section for those kind of teams <laughs> if that happens. And you know, we'll do, every every day when those games get casted, they'll just play funeral music, and then just think <laughs> about how much money you made for selling the player, and then you'll go into the game and lose, and then that'll be fine. You go into next week. Yeah, cool. I don't know where we go from ninth to twelfth. Uh, I kind of like this because I've what yeah. o R Squirtle I... Squad Oxygen Dark Ratio. Yeah, Squ I don't know. You think Squirtle oxygen? Squad? Yes, uh, are you are you you're a fan of Squirtle Squad? I, I'm not really sure where they should be ranked outside of that one streak that they went on. And streak maybe makes it sound a bit like fluke. I don't mean that. I mean they won a lot of games in a row against really tough competition to be able to qualify this time around. But they weren't um, they weren't on my radar to the same extent as uh, some of the other teams. So I'm not really sure if that was representative of what you'd expect from them. Yeah. Um... I think uh, LCQ definitely had maybe a few, like, I don't know why. It just it definitely felt like teams were dropping like flies in comparison, um, where they had maybe an easier path through. But uh, they they know. were Squirtle still Squad had a pretty pretty decent path. I think I mean, compared right? to the other time, like you don't have breakthrough, you don't have uh, disguise, you don't have right, right, oxygen. yeah. Like there there was a, there was a number of teams. Uh, like the only r real one was the teams that qual, but sonics and the nation that were putting up like any sort of good performances it definitely felt weaker this time around uh anyways yeah. I'm, that's just me speaking bullshit anyways because i didn't watch those games in the lower bracket anyways and probably couldn't watch them but like i i still think that it's re slightly representative because it shows not only how they're playing under pressure uh but it also shows the fact that these guys like have the ability to make really really good calls uh, that's what i took away from it and they have like flashes of really good players as well um but i could be convinced that they should be lower than like oxygen yeah that's what i'm thinking because i've seen oxygen making it deep in a number of tournaments so far not like i'm an expert on the team or anything but it just feels like when you look at their track record they might have proven it just a little bit more um i know our or have been Tearing things up, but yeah, I don't, I, I don't really know. This is, this is the part where I'm just gonna be intrigued to follow any of these teams if they end up taking big results away from the, the, the top teams.
but I would expect if they played against a, a team through like one through six or something for it to be uh, pretty comfortable. All right, so are we locking this in? Wait. 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 There he is. He's back. Hold on. What's Where are we at? It's basically the exact same oh. since you left. We added tier breaks and discussed uh, Squirtle Squad going below oxygen. And I believe that's okay, the only change. Okay, big old bet. I'm fine with... I'm, I'm fine with all that, yeah. I think... <laughs> well, hold on. So we have number one guard, number two M80, number three Shopify, tier break. TSM, G2, phase, disguised, breakthrough, tier break. OR Esports, Oxygen, Squirtle Squad, Dark Ratio. I am okay with this. Okay. Now, Brent, I might make I might have made an argument for Dark Ratio, but I think um they underperformed in this qualifier. I think they should have qualified much faster in comparison to their previous performances. And um yeah. Time to reveal you don't believe the in, pattern. You don't believe in big boy will. Uh, I mean, he was, he, he no. <laughs> wow. Oh, there you have <laughs> it, folks. Uh, what's number the two? Pull it up. What in our power rankings, number two is a cursed position. Okay. Any team ah. that we place in number two is destined to fail. Oh, we'll oh, see. Okay. See, that's the thing. I could buy into that though. It, it, even with this team, but we're, but the thing is, we're ranking power. Okay, we're not ranked. This isn't who's gonna. This okay. isn't okay. placements. But this is this is the this prophecies is that I'm the, when when I the I fucking feel, mad hermit it. on the mountain with yeah. lightning striking behind him that everyone <laughs> laughs off because the, the weird fuck just collects new ties and just creates <laughs> potions in his little cauldron. This is me right now, and I'm screaming my prophecies, and when the village has fucking swarms of locusts <laughs> lo descending lo upon locusts, it, loci, locusts, loci, loci. Just descending on it, you'll fucking think on this moment. Number two, cursed position in the Plat Chat Power Rankings. They always underperform. Well, what's the proof? You're just saying The proof? It. Reykjavik, Fnatic and the Guard at number two. We had them joint. Oh, but because Copenhagen, Fnatic, yeah, Fnatic at team. number two. We had the guard second. Holy shit, yes. that's egregious. The champs. Who the fuck was it? The champs. Don't say it's for now. Paper X. At number two. You know why? It's a cursed it's because position. Is it cursed but that, but or is the problem we have Wilkinson on the show? No, he's always going to push no, no, for no, The, up the there. problem is the second place team from all of the Masters events has gone yeah. out in groups every time. The next time around, so it's yep. not. It's not that our power rankings are do okay. Well, well I mean, let's go all the way back to that, challenges. Maybe it is our power it challenges. Are we, are we the, the cause way. of the second place curse? Let well, me find it. No, it's because they. It's because <laughs> they go second. They play second in the previous Masters event. Therefore, we rank them second, Josh. and then they lose. It's not on us. It's where they rank in the previous event. It's not us. It's not us. Second, it's us. For it's, us. <laughs> it's us. Second, it's us. Second, why is what's going so bad? so large. <laughs> you you don't uh, think it's us then, Josh? No, it's based on the previous results. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. challengers NA, the opening for it. Number two, Sentinels. <laughs> It's a cursed fucking wait, position. Wait, wait, go back even further. I can't go back any, uh, any further. Josh looks like he just champions twenty twenty one lemon in the mouth. I can't Surely. go back any further. I'll find but typically, it. what yeah, ends up happening I mean, is the team we rate third to fourth ends up having a big resurgence that we didn't expect. It ends up doing very, very well. Um, and also, a couple of times, number seven, six, seven, eight to those positions have either been drastically wrong or drastically, you know. A team has out, uh, you know, exceeded our expectations or um, dropped even further. I mean, I could yeah, I mean, see that happening. That's going to be on disguised and breakthrough so, this time. Here's yeah, what yeah. I'm suggesting: I could see phase disguised or breakthrough. All make any of those. I think it's very possible they could make a deep run and finish like or just collapse third. to pieces. So I'm suggesting a couple of changes: <laughs> TSM and M80 swapped positions. What? Do they okay. No. no. So <laughs> this avoids no. the second place curse. How? That way, if TSM, because here's the thing, fourth place actually was incredibly consistent at winning events in our power rankings. Fourth place was mad consistent. Loud, loud we had at fourth a lot. They came second and made finals a lot of the times. 
and they were yeah. in fourth for a ton of ours. In fact, they won events in ours as well. So TSM at second kind of like secures that because we would have had them at fourth. The Sky's <laughs> Toast team. This is where I'm seeing is like the kind of paper X of our, of our bracket here where we were really underrating paper X. I think you replace them with, I would say... He's cooking. G2. <laughs> I'd swap them I with see, G2. I don't think that's... I don't think that's that unreasonable. No, no, no. I'd swap them with G2. Compared G2. to your previous. <laughs> this guy's toast team, yeah. With that. And then put G2 at seventh. And then I think what we need is. He's burning the dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is good. Oh, I think this should be enough changes to secure. Well, go back five what minutes, I'm... take the screenshot. We've been doing this way too long. This is the what, what, power ranking. What I'm confused with, Bren, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to make our power rankings more accurate? Or are you trying to make the more curse accurate. go away? What was the point of that? I'm making it more accurate because... These are the patterns I've noticed now when I've looked back at the power rankings. But, but if there I is a cosmological to, right, curse, I'm, I'm it's going to happen to that one too. <laughs> you're, just changing, to you're just changing who is getting cursed, Bren. No, yeah. no, I'm not. Because the, the, we've, you guys are so set on this not being the true power ranking. I want us to come back to my, Bren's power ranking. Fine, we can come back to in both. Nine screenshot weeks. both. Screenshot both. And this is going to be screen, the... This, screen, it's going to be this. Screen, screen, it's going to be this. Screen, fine. Screenshot both. Kurt, can you put it back to where it was before, please? For 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 the so we we can find screenshot both and we'll see. We have the Bren power ranking and we have the official. This is the official power ranking. ranking. I'm not this, I'm okay. not including this because I only had 25 percent weight and it was a three against one every you time. You only had 25 percent weight. <laughs> Do you want more? That's when you want 33, you well, I've got, and then we when can I got divvy my way, up the 66. I've got want? my own power ranking. I'm fine. Okay, with it. okay, I'm happy. Okay, okay. Good lord. All right. Well, do you guys want to? We should give another three hours to, to, to NA tier two. Oh my god. Um. All right. I. Uh, all right. That, that, that's enough. That's enough of ranking for now. That's enough rankings. We're talking about what's coming up next, baby. What's next for Valorant in 2023? Is there going to be new agents? Uh, will there be new comics, maybe, or new lore videos, new skins? Apparently, Team Deathmatch is incoming. And actually, I got, I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. Team Deathmatch sounds hella fun. I'm just a casual-ass gamer. I don't want to play some try-hard game for 45 minutes. Uh, they planted the spike. Fuck that. I just want to go run around <laughs> and shoot. That's all I like to do with my uh -huh. little brain in my little video game. Run around and shoot for 20 minutes and dip. Yeah. That's what I want to do. So the, uh... put bad water in Valorant <laughs> and let's play DM on it. That's what I want to do. The, I don't uh, get how the... they're going to do it. Like the, the whole point of the spike is that it stops people from just sitting in a corner and you have to go and play hide and seek and find them. Like they're drawn to the objective. How are you going to play? Like if there was no objective in Valorant and the attackers just had to go and hunt down the defenders, what a fucking dumb game that would be. How, yeah, are, how okay. are they going to make it? But it's not, it's it's not, not supposed, supposed to be competitive, defenders. Josh. It's supposed to be fun. And there's not attack or defense. Like <laughs> it's, gonna, it's just two yeah, equal teams. Yeah, the spawns just get flipped all the time. Have Josh, you never played Team Deathmatch in any other game? Okay, okay yeah, yeah. Okay, so... So you just insta respawn, and it's just who gets up to fifty. No, they probably do like 100. timed respawn. It's hundred. Like like most team deathmatch systems in games, they do like a timed respawn where if you die, it's like yeah. two seconds, three seconds, sometimes more to respawn. And you have like areas of the map where it detects how many players there are, and it, it's a pretty common um, concept at high level games that play team deathmatch, which is like COD. Haha, -ha, very funny. COD is a competitive game, but like. The idea of spawn control and things and in halo as well yeah like the ideas of controlling the map enough where you split I'm, i don't know why we're getting into this because it's never going to be played in a fucking competitive setting it's meant to be a fun casual oh, i know well, well fucking skip hates fun that's yeah, the skip problem this guy fun. hates skip fun. hates skip hates the league he hates fun he hates these players he's always fucking Dude, coming out of here <laughs> swinging on these players yeah, I'm just kind of like over like the spike as a concept. I just, I think it's time we, we move on, honestly. And that's why I'm, I'm ready to play Team Deathmatch. I just want to play this, a nice, fun, casual mode. You know, I, I, it's a I new was, avenue for e-daters everywhere. You don't I even was, have to dude, play. Valorant is the e-data game. They've been in my games. Hey, yeah, uh, they've been in my yeah. games. I'm telling you, they've been in my games. They've been dating. Oh, I've, 
I've been playing some games recently, only yeah. rated on. I don't have an, an EU account since I moved to the UK, mm. except that when we were doing a Pokemon race, one of the uh, challenges that we had to do that took us out of the Pokemon race was make a new account in Valorant and complete the tutorial. So I made a new EU account and the chat named it, I miss her. Hashtag Greg, which for a married man is really shit. And my name's not Greg. So I've been playing unrated and I've been destroying because the first few games, it just puts you in like silver lobbies or something. So I'm getting like 30, 40 kills on an I miss her account. And I'm like feeling sick, like like actually sick to my stomach. Like I've become everything that I hate. Oh, That's quite oh funny. man. You either die or live long enough to be the... Villain, diff. whatever the fuck <laughs> the homie <laughs> said. <laughs> what I do yeah, say yeah, in that fucking one. movie. I like game modes like this though. This is this is sort of the casual. Yeah, play I base. like fun. There's a big casual to, I mean, player base in Valorant that like game modes like this, and and always the response from people is like, "Why are they putting dev time to this? Like, this doesn't take much dev time. I don't think to make a team death match. The person who's working on this is not going to be working on the replay system." for example, for the game. You know what I mean? And I was pleasantly surprised by the comments on this YouTube video as well. It's like a lot of them being like, where's the, but this is all cool, but where's the replay viewer? You know, a lot of people, because usually the YouTube comments is like uh, indicative of the, uh, of the opinion of the masses, right? It's like the, 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 the just the- God, I hope not. The common, the common I person. I think that's not true, actually. You think so? I feel like it's just like the most casual people who just consume Valorant content. They're what they're like. They're they're subscribed to the default Valorant oh, no. YouTube channel. I feel like you should it's, it's, it's to, come to, from YouTube to TikTok now. So you got to read the TikTok comments. It'll be better. I feel like it's just the same though. <laughs> uh, maybe I feel like you just you need a certain level of passion to put those fingers to typing. You know, but maybe yeah. What I tell you, I we could start like a people propaganda. write reviews on Amazon, so I don't really get it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like we could we could start yeah, like a propaganda campaign though. If you really wanted to get like the casual I'm player down. base on board, what we got to do is we got to individually reach out mm -hmm. to all of the TikTok Valorant edit creators mm -hmm. and say, imagine how much easier your it would be to edit if you had a replay viewer. And then they'll be like, oh, right, we got a we need a replay viewer. And then all of the people who watch the fucking funk edit TikToks. We'll be like, <laughs> yeah, we need a replay viewer. We need a replay viewer. We need a replay viewer. Yeah. And then they'll just fucking, they'll make it. They also, in the, in the video, good news for you, the hey tournament mode is going to come out this year. They, they said, said this which, year. Yeah. Which Does that excite you? It needed to be out now. <laughs> why, why? Because the, if, they, yeah. if they want to tie it into the ecosystem, you have a fucking a whole swarm of tier two Spits. players who can't compete Spits. right now. They've just lost, the, 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 the qualifiers just ended and all of them, their future's up in the air. The, mm -hmm. This is a really pivotal moment in the Valorant ecosystem where you're going to have essentially just a huge, a huge section of talent um, choose to go into a different direction. You're going to lose a lot of the momentum that you've been building in the last two years because you don't have available avenues, I don't think, because the premier system isn't ready. This should have been a priority, I think, for them to, to pump out and get ready. I think it's a priority before the 2024 system begins so that they can actually unveil their plans for 2024 with the clash, uh, sorry, premier system incorporated into those plans. But I think you need to be doing, you know, like beta testing, public testing, that kind of stuff before you announce or at least before it first officially starts hooking into the main system. Um, and yeah. there's no way they had time to do that in 2023. Yeah, but the, the beta system can 100% be an outlet for these players to play. And sure. and also we did have an alpha test of Premiere in Brazil. Yeah, it was in Brazil. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And so, but they did say that there's going to be a global, uh, a global beta test and um, in this video as well, which is not like uh, old news, whereas Knowing it was going to be released this year was yeah that was old news we, we, we already, already that, we right? already knew that it was yeah so the only thing we really learned about Premiere here is it's not coming for a while and we're getting a global beta um, so that's personally good. I I don't think it's a problem unless it gets delayed to the point where it can't be integrated for 2024 well, what, I think what, that's a I think that's a really solid roadmap for a, like sure next year everyone knows how the pathway works what are the aspiring pros playing in Tarek's ten months. The Knights five hundred dollars. They're not getting into Tyx ten months. I mean, Jen, probably Knights are just going to put on a bunch of cups. Yeah, yeah. Well, Knights uh, busy running tier two, so no, they won't. And energy's gone. So I think Knights so is still doing another monthly cup. 
they? I mean, maybe yes. not weekly, but I think they're doing monthly stuff. They're, they're doing a monthly cup, and maybe whatever's been scheduled, they're still going to do. But I can't imagine that while running Tier 2 and Game Changers and whatever they've been running in the past is going to continue. And if she yeah. couldn't keep that up, yeah. other than the summer championship. At least they paid Sully. You guys see that? He got his money. <laughs> so oh, nice. Good. <laughs> nice. good for him. Yeah. It's like a public um, dragging. You can buy some new sneakers. What was the yeah. other thing that that there was? There was something else that was huge in this. Um, they announced oh, oh, console oh. and and mobile is something that they're working on like significantly. So by the way, all that dev time that you want on replay mode, it's going to console and and mobile. By the way, yeah, yeah. that's fine. It's more important, genuinely. I think it's probably more important to get the game on multiple platforms, grow the the size of the game, mm -hmm. and then do the replay. Very here. unusual game to have on mobile and console, though. It's it's something that never worked for Counter Strike, um, which, considering it's got you know CS has got such a global, not a global reach in terms of like you know it touching every single part of the world, but Counter Strike has been popular in regions that have used consoles and has certainly. That has been a possibility in the past before and just never took off because the to me the game just doesn't make sense for console. It's so like based on uh crosshair placement, I can imagine it being really clunky as a console game. Just imagining myself trying to use a controller to play the game, it would uh, be counterpoint horrible. Josh, uh aim assist. It's fine. Yeah. It'd be <laughs> yeah. Really Jeez, I just mean in terms online. of like speed. No, I, of I know what you mean. Stuff, I, yeah. I know what you mean. But I also would argue that CS:GO um, is only popular in the popular console regions where COD is insanely popular. Sorry, so. sorry. Kurt was putting something on the screen there. I think I was supposed to derive some info from that, but I don't know what it was. So Counter Strike good... was released on August twenty first, two thousand twelve. The PS four was released in two thousand thirteen. That means. The PS3, one of the worst consoles of all time, was around when Global Offensive was launched. I think that had a lot to do with how it shit... It wasn't on Xbox? It, maybe I it, think was. it was. on Xbox, it was on actually, Xbox. yeah. But, just, but also yeah. Valve didn't update it. Yeah, it, it they was... They just left it. I don't even think it was Valve's game at that point. Because when Counter-Strike released, it wasn't... I don't think it was yeah, developed yeah, by it Valve. Yeah, they took control of it. Hidden Legends or whatever the frick uh, no, their name was. I think you just gotta look at recent games... For console yeah. stuff like look at Fortnite, like that game i've played that on pc I, I don't even know how people play that on console yeah but they do but, but and also, they do a great job so the the mobile market as well is just blown up significantly in the last like 10 years or whatever since cs was out and there is no mobile version of cs2 like I, i'd imagine that that's also a major focus point and cross play between those different platforms as well is is massive um yeah so it's a, it's an entirely different marketplace. And also yeah. there are FPSs that are successful in mobile regions like India and China and whatnot that uh, I think Valorant was going to try to tap yeah. into. Do any of those have, I'm really ignorant about that, but I, I'm not aware of any mobile or console game that has, that is popular, that has movement based aim, as in you have to be stood still in order to be uh, aiming accurately. I, I just, I don't, I'm not aware of that. Why do you think we can run and gun, tool? Josh? Have you ever used the fucking stinger? Like... <laughs> yeah, just everybody's using the stinger, just running around in the in the the meta in the console game, yeah. just becomes run and gun with the specter. That's why like, you why, why would I... you ever buy a phantom or a vandal? <laughs> That's why you don't have to counter strafe. Like, <laughs> yeah. 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 Didn't they also kind of hint towards the location of champs? Did they? Yeah. Um, they were talking no, about the they ecosystem. Said, they said they're but... not disclosing it. Oh, no, no there, was, there was rumors it was going to be a transcript of it was. They were like, and champions, which is going to be in. And then it was like a pause. Yeah. Nah, we'll talk about that later. Nah, mm -hmm. as in NA. Oh, so it's like going to be in LA I or something? I thought it was like a little, Ooh, fucking little thing. double entendre. Yeah, I thought it was like a little thing. And it, I mean, it makes sense Dude, for it to be in LA. Dude, you rap genius? <laughs> <laughs> I you broke that one down. What the fuck? It, it, I feel like it would be in... <laughs> It, but it just makes the most sense for it to be in LA as it well. Was leaked, it, wasn't it leaked to well, be was, in LA? Yeah, it was also reported to be in LA. Too. They did all the yeah. events in Europe. So, and now they're doing one in Brazil. They're doing yep. a Masters in Tokyo. Yep. The last place to, to do an event really where there's a huge audience would be North America. Yep. So I think it makes sense, right? Yep. But I, I took that as a little teaser. 
That, I did. Yeah. I mean, I did not pick that one up, but I'm rolling with you. I took it as a little tease. I'm rolling with you. It probably will be in LA. That just makes sense, yeah. per, right? I guess LA, I'm making shit up. LA. I don't know. Fuck. It's probably expensive as hell, but they could probably sell a lot of tickets. Little fucking yeah, that, zoomers that was, over there. It, there was a report on, I think it was the 16th of January, something like that, from uh, uh, from Alejandro Gomez that said. Uh, the United States will host Valorant Champions 2023 with LA being the most probable host city. Mm. Uh, there wasn't very much detail in the article particularly. It was, you know, just a uh, just essentially that headline. Just sources say that you the US is going to be hosting it. So, But it makes all the sense in the world, so I believe it. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, all right. We still got a lot to talk about. I, there's a lot on my mind today that I, I don't want to talk about. But also, uh, <laughs> I also wanted to talk about... Um, Oh, no, because with, with you guys were talking about the replay viewer. And, you know, we were joking about, like, people wanting it for, you know, you're talking about content mm -hmm. for TikTok edits and stuff. But it would also be a significant help for people that make analytical content. Yes. Do you think that if there was a replay viewer, the analytical content could become interesting enough that Redditors will post it instead of drama? <laughs> <laughs> what? What? <laughs> That's the price. That? Yeah. Do you think I understand possible, where you're bro? coming from from this angle? And the answer is no. Because <laughs> yeah. uh, the, the the reality is people get invested into sports because of storylines, not because of this sick fucking QB sneak. You know, like the, yeah. the people people <laughs> like people like the storylines. Yep. They like the emotional aspect. They like the drama that comes with competing with the sports of it, right? The uh, that's where a lot of the passion comes from. Analytical content has its own place, but I think when I because this is coming off the back of what was the podcast, the wise, the the wise, the wise men. blokes. Yeah. The, oh, this is the, the, the steel but, thing. But that's like yes. that was like the, the the council of old heads from CS, where it's their they're coming from the the Counter Strike background, and CS was in its own time very unique where it kind of like developed as a game has all of these storylines has all of this history before really the era of like content creation like modern day content creation where like it's a lot more casual focused and so of course the the fucking subreddit is going to be you know trended towards all of the competitive side because that is where you know that's where all the viewership is it all comes from tournaments there's really not there's counter-strike you know twitch streamers but there's no big like youtube channels really on the same level as like there are for valorant there's not you don't get that variety in terms of it it's of just course. a symptom of the modern, the modern state of gaming where, you know, the competitive side is separated. And, you know, it's, I think it's quite normal. Um, I, the, on, the, I think the, the point that they were making was like, you know, the analytical content doesn't do particularly well in Valorant or something because it doesn't get posted on the subreddit. I think it's just a false assumption to even begin the conversation with because... While the Valorant subreddit does not tend towards analytical content, YouTube analytical content is actually doing very well in this game compared to anything that I've seen in other games that I've been interested in. How to get better at Valorant, here, look at the pros, or how to get better at Valorant, here are 10 smoke lineups, or how to, you know, this kind of content, even if it's the much more hardcore stuff that we are more adjacent to the thinking man's valorant i mean i don't know what you're going to get if you go if you just type in how to get better at valorant but the the thinking man's valorant's channel has gone up dramatically by posting only things about the competitive sphere i mean tmv doesn't really do that many like here here's how you can get better like a guide most of what tmv does is um, you know, the, this is a VOD review, this is this. You know, it's just consistent putting out content and his channel's grown pretty significantly. Like, mm -hmm. these numbers aren't blowing people away. But take a look at, like, Sean Gare's channel, for example. If you rank it by the, um, by the like, most viewed things on his channel, bear in mind that he was a CS player for so long and notorious for that. Put it on popular and you'll see that his um, Lotus video is like, what is that? The the seventh highest video that he's made at 126K <laughs> views. That one just caught me off. What is that one? Rain makes one of the best plays in the world. The thumbnail is just <laughs> rain makes rain me makes wet. Me wet. <laughs> Yeah. Sean's got some nasty thumbnails. What, what is hell? this nasty man up to what? on his channel? 
Jesus those, those. Christ, sorry, Josh Shovelman, but yeah, you're, yes, the Lotus video has a lot of views too. Lotus but, but strategy. The Shazam two, too. two out of the top seven are of um, of Valorant stuff, and they're very analytical, and they are essentially what they're talking about, right? It's not like Reddit is going crazy for them, but a lot of it is evergreen content. Reddit doesn't really fuck with evergreen content that much oh. because... That, that's not what they're after. They're after stuff that like is important to them right now. The reason that Reddit content gets voted is because it's important for a lot of people at that specific point in time. Like a, a video that's about like the best Omen one ways on Split is going to get views over a long period of time. Like whenever it is relevant, it's not going to be like it drops suddenly everyone's pogging about it because it's not about something that's time sensitive. Um. Also, uh, just another channel to look at, Sovereign Guides. Uh, look at this guy, bro. This is pure Bard Review content that is somehow made, uh, like, gripping in a way. And it is popping the fuck off. This guy is started, like, last year in Champions, 893,000 views oh my for God. a VOD review, essentially. Yeah. And it's very entertaining. He makes it. He makes it about the story of the game. But, like, it's... That he's literally putting arrows on the fucking mini map. Like that's the, yeah. that's that's what the content is. This uh, is like Blitz esports stuff. When they used to make videos, people won't really know them now. I don't think. But the Blitz app that you can use to track stuff in League of Legends and Valorant and that kind of thing. They used to have a YouTube channel that made videos, and they did um, they did Overwatch, they did uh, CS as well, I think, and probably some other games that I'm unaware of. And those videos went fucking crazy. But they also spent a lot of money on getting those videos made, and it wasn't, it didn't end up being um, a successful business strategy, so they focused on the app. But th some of these videos went, went nuts in terms of, like, I don't think they were around when Valorant was out, so I don't think they made uh, Valorant videos. But they, they ended up being extremely <laughs> popular. Yeah, but they probably did League of Legends stuff. Yeah, it's I don't crazy. know. There's so many <laughs> League of Legends. There's so YouTube much League of Legends content. They might change the YouTube channel name. Yeah. Yeah, well. I don't know. I don't know. I, I would also argue, though, like, this game, like, uh, the eSports stuff that Steel might be talking about or, or whatever is also, just in general right now, um, like you were saying, Josh, it's not what people are trying to click on, and it's very hard to relate that without trying in the video to relate that to everyday experiences. Whereas yeah. you will see people on the Valve competitive subreddit really fuck with, um, like... Well, I mean, it's kind of a little bit more esports focused, but you will see people trying to get better on that subreddit. And most of the time, the stuff that is made about actual ranked play um, is what they're going to want. So you don't have any place for them on the subreddits, but you do on YouTube. And that's why a lot of those videos are still doing phenomenal. And I will say, though, like the esports focused ones, I think there's very few content creators who have stuck with doing it. I mean, Josh, you were making videos in 2020. Um, and yeah, I just didn't bother. They they take too long. They, they be take, asked. Yeah, exactly. They take a long time. <laughs> Genuinely, just couldn't be fun. <laughs> they take a long time. It's a great clip. It's a great <laughs> clip. The cursor shows in the subreddit. Uh, they take a long time. It's hard as fuck to like even do the research for it because you're you're using the VOD system. Um, so I would argue that the replay system would help people yes, stay a little absolutely. bit more consistent. Um, but you still can make the content. It's 100% possible. And it's just a matter of a lot of people um, not staying consistent with it being kind of an issue. The reason why maybe only two or three right now are kind of popping off. Um, and also, the Valorant competitive subreddit is actually really quite balanced in terms of the stuff that mm -hmm. gets promoted. Um, it's certainly, you know, th there's... There's bad aspects of it too, but every yeah. single place on the internet is going to have bad aspects of it. I would yeah. actually argue that the Val competitive subreddit is like really fucking good for talking yeah, about it is. the the narratives and storylines and actually having insightful and interesting conversations. Like there's people who are watching the game casually, actually engaging with each other on the internet. I think that's really cool, no matter how you slice it. Yeah, uh, and I think that most of what the Valorant competitive subreddit is talking about now is the um, ten man stuff. But give it a week, and they'll be mostly talking about uh, lock-in. And then, you know, they'll be doing that kind of shit as well. Actually, I mean, a lot of it is about the lock-in. And then, and then people getting mad that Steel called them out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I but even the, even the Twitter drama isn't really drama necessarily. 
that I mean, this one very specifically that Kurt's got on the screen is like just banter between two people that I think are friends, right? I don't think it's drama at all. But the the other tweets that are linked above, the one from like Zekin, that's not drama. That's like him sharing his opinion on how the 10-man system works and it's people engaging with what Zekin is saying, not just being like, oh, popcorn, like Zekin's going to fucking smack Tarek at LAN. You know, it's not, it's not <laughs> stupid to that extent. It's actually got something to it. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's... it's thing, yeah. I, I, oh, popcorn. I feel like <laughs> I, 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 Discussion. Tend, I tend to agree with you, Ball. Like, I, I, at least from the, the, the subreddits for other games that, that I've been on, I feel like the Valorant one is actually pretty decent. Mm. I, I feel like oh, there's a lot the competitive of... Competitive or the normal one? The competitive one. Yeah, I feel like yeah. there's a good amount of just... I feel like a lot of this stuff that gets posted is also like kind of ironic shit posting. That like yeah. there's a, an a, an understanding from the people posting it and the people viewing it that it's like not really supposed to be taken seriously. Like I feel like there's more shit posting silliness on that than other ones as well, which is cool with me. I like a fun silly time. Um, I feel like it's not. Yeah, I, I just I think it's actually what? pretty decent compared to most other of the time that Witcher there's games, like so. genuine things to take issue with like a lot of times like shazam clips get posted out of context or whatever like a lot of times like you just think about it how the viewer might have thought about it and you're like okay like this makes sense why they think that instead of like you're an idiot like <laughs> but the the great part is too that you can hook into all of that stuff and still make analytical content right like you can some let's say back when sentinels was doing really poorly you can hook into like shaz's tweet being or shaz's on stream thing but getting dragged into the center of attention and you can make content about like oh, this is why this is why shaz is molding right now sentinels suck and you could make a youtube video about like why sentinels are struggling and make it really analytical and people would be interested because it's tangentially related to the like the human element that they've already been sucked into i think I think there's just tons of different ways to go with it. It, it. Most of the people that are on that podcast, like the content creation isn't what they're primarily doing. It's it's not something they're pouring all of their effort into. There's a lot of people that are making content and are doing really well at it because the the formula is there if you if you have the time and the effort and the inclination to to go and do it. I mean, this guy's also, toast was on the podcast for a significant period of time and he's yeah. Basically, uh, he's been a content creator for a while, a very successful one at that. So, um, yeah, but he's not making analytical Valorant content. Yeah. It, that's not the same um, yeah. complaint from him. Yeah. Um, I think it goes back to what you said originally, Josh, in that um, analytical con content's not as popular anymore. Or was it you, Brian? It's not as popular anymore because content has changed over time. And. Just you need the, to be more creative with your analytical content. That's why it looked like Sovereign put a lot of effort into those videos. Yeah. And I think that's why it's doing so well. My, my point was that the, the complaints were coming from the perspective of like Counter-Strike, which is a very unique game and the way it developed and the time it developed. And uh, yeah. yeah. Also, the main community of Counter-Strike is like fully tapped into playing leagues yeah. and stuff, by the way. So that content is very relatable to everybody who's playing at ESEA Open. <laughs> Yeah, which is also the why, that's also why the videos like the Summer Gods one do so well. Like those, all the people, those 900,000 people watching that breakdown of the match, like they're not the competitive subred subredditors. Those are just regular Valorant players and Valorant YouTube consumers mm -hmm. that see that and still find it interesting. Like there's a huge, the Valorant is fucking huge and there's a massive amount of people that are interested in competitive and watch competitive related videos and educational videos that don't have an uh, uh, an interest in posting stuff on Reddit or being in, involved in the community in that way. They're just consuming the content elsewhere. Like there's a ton of educational content on uh, like on TikTok and shit as well. Um, it's just not that's just not the kind of stuff that gets posted on the Reddit. Like people don't post videos on the Reddit that are already that are getting nine hundred thousand views. <laughs> like yeah. what gets posted is like the analytical video from a guy that is like it's a good video, but they're not really known. They don't you don't post the thing that's like already blown up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um it just doesn't really happen. It's the people that don't have as big of an audience or the things that are happening in the moment. Like the the, the Tarek League, <laughs> the Tarek yeah. private 
league. Also, yeah. stay out the fucking comments, stay out the live threads, and you are really much happier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, also just, yeah, just simply just don't read it. <laughs> How can cyberbullying be real if whatever the fuck that one tweet is? <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, there's been a lot of talk about the Taric League. How long do you guys think it's going to last? Because we've seen these a million times before. <laughs> it's cool. It's entertaining to watch. But also, seen these a million times before in just about every game that has ever existed in a competitive uh, space. I I've got a date for you, if you like. I okay, think it's what's, gonna, your <laughs> it's gonna, what's your date? Genuinely, <laughs> it's going to survive until about week two of the North American split happens, when a lot of the NA players are hardcore scrimming, and then they're playing their matches, and then they're not as invested in the 10-mans. Once that becomes their, like, their... Even at that point, it's like the third layer of shit you care about because you really care about the match and then you really care about your scrims to get better. And then this is just kind of fuck about time. As soon as the 10 mans become fuck about time for the top level pros and then that level, that level of like not caring about it as much trickles down. It's all over. It's all over, baby. It's game over. The, the, the people are going to be complaining about people left, right and center. But it's really cool for the off season. And I think... Even for the for the sanity of everybody involved, it might be best to only keep it as an off-season thing. Like, literally close it down when matches are happening, and you will preserve the sanctity of this thing. <laughs> Try and keep it as alive as you can while there are no matches being played in an official capacity. But then just, just fucking close the doors for a while, and you'll keep it safe. Yep. <clears throat> So yeah, that's actually one of the most brilliant suggestions I think anybody's fucking made for this thing because I fully agree with Josh. Uh, these things yeah. never last. Uh, they never do. And I think I think we had an episode like way back when when Roy tried to start a, a yep. strong legs tried to start a ten man thing, and uh, that went right down the drain when people who were invited started yelling about things, which is already starting to happen. So. Yeah, because I mean, as soon as you start having the conversations about. Why are certain players in my queue? Why isn't this guy invited? Like that, it just it, it, this. I've seen this happen like five hundred times mm. in in fucking Valorant and Counter Strike. Didn't this happen in Fortnite as well? I swear, oh, yeah. this just happens in every well, game. We, uh, Fortnite all the time. was pretty successful because it was literally the only way to practice. So like, you had to make it work. Uh, right, but dude, yeah. there was so much fucking drama involved in it. Like yeah. every single week. Bro. Yeah, and I, 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 I like helped run like the open version of it to qualify into it, and dude, it's just a mess. It's a mess constantly. But yep. I mean, it is. It's a form of organized gatekeeping. So I also don't really like the idea of it in the first place, and um, would much rather that people focus on making ranked a good place and just playing your best and trying to like encourage a community and a and a society that like has fun playing rank we like, live in a great. society <laughs> um I, I think though that it's a, it's a really cool idea from the content creation point of view like i i love it from that angle during the off season and you can see the whole community is much more invested in these games compared to just watching radiant ranked they enjoy watching it more because it's more serious because they feel like they're getting more out of it because the interactions between the players are people that they know and because you get recurring interactions I, the there's a there's a podcast that i tune into occasionally uh, run by the gaming careers youtube channel which is one of the guys is like an old head from tf2 as well that maybe kurt and wyatt will remember um, but he, the, one of the, the podcasts that they'd done last week, they were talking about a collaboration within the League of Legends community. The League of Legends streamers had got together and decided that they were going to put up a prize pool for whoever could get the highest in the official ranked system um, by a certain date. And the viewership within the League of Legends category went up enormously. Um, they, they were pulling it up. If you, if you want to just take a look at the graph, it was this Why Are Twitch Ad Offers Suddenly So Bad episode, Kurt? And it was about 1708. You'll see the graph on Sully Gnome. Yeah, it's Cube oh, from uh, TF2. The <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But it's, it is great content. This channel is genuinely was, fantastic, by the way. It's so good. It doesn't it's so very good, good content in TF2, and I'm happy yeah. he's successful in YouTube now. That does not surprise yeah. me at all. That dude is talented as fuck. But yeah, the, the viewership overall in the League of Legends category went and kind of skyrocketed when, when all of the streamers collaborated together. It's at like 1708. Um, so I think, you, I think if anyone had really looked at it, you would probably see, no, 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 this is the wrong episode. I said, it's, the, it's the one that says um, why Twitch off is suddenly so bad. 
Um, but anyway, the, the point of this being that I think you'd see a similar thing in Valorant if anyone had gone and looked at the numbers. And if I was smart enough, I could pull up Solino myself and just check. But it seems, at least from the competitive side of things, that it's really driven engagement, at least, with what's going on in the offseason, which is only a positive thing. Yep. Yeah, I yeah. feel you. The games are fun. I mean, at, at this point, they just, yeah, if we can, uh, you know, if we could just get rid of those, uh, those, those crazy crypto throwers, get them the fuck out. Clean up ranked a little bit. Should be all good. I give it two months. Yep. You could. I give yeah, it two months. I mean, but honestly, this, uh, the, one of the best outcomes that could come from this is Riot um, seeing the success of something like this and creating the equivalent of the Champions queue that they have in League of Legends, right? Which is, I think, Have like, you seen that that is of... dead as fuck, though? Isn't it? I mean, the, I saw some tweets from Captain Flowers a couple of days ago saying that no matches had been played for three days in a row in Champions really? Q. Okay, well, I didn't know that. <laughs> like, not a single <laughs> but... game had been played for three days in a row, and he was like, I knew it was going to cool down at some point, but I didn't think it was going to be dead on arrival. So while it's a sick idea, it I don't know for what reason why, because I'm not tapped into League, uh. but it, it just doesn't <laughs> seem to have gotten off the ground. Yeah, well, I don't think, um, personally, I don't think Riot is ever going to have the, I mean... They have the incentive to, but I don't think they have the bandwidth to like properly like maintain and run a league like this because uh, the the only successful one that I I seriously know of, especially in a in a FPS that's as competitive as this, is CS with FPL and yeah. CSA rank S, right? And those you require significant um, motivation, like significant incentive. It was like 10k every month or something like that maybe maybe less maybe more i don't know the exact value but it was significant for the top three placers in fpl so you had people grinding the fuck out of it and there was relegations and um, promotions and people were trying to get in from an open system and yeah. i mean the best part of it when it was completely closed down when it was fully private and it was just people invited by whatever council uh esca put together to to start rank s that was the best time but um, that's never going to last and you're always going to need to have an inflow of people. And that's when the trust deg degrades a little bit. When you start to have people who are like, oh, well, this guy isn't very good. I don't really trust that he's going to play well. And then on both sides of the, of the game, you're going to have people playing less serious. Um, but there's, there's a threshold that can be met. And by the way, um, stream sniping is something that they don't have to think about at all in this 10 man thing either as well, because they have a significant trust factor. Whereas ranked, Right now, stream sniping is a fucking mess, as, as, as well as the crypto throwers. Like, there's just issues in rank that are not going to be solved that degrades your trust in the entire system already by default. It has nothing to do with the players. And on top of that, you're playing with random people. So, like, it's chalk from the get-go for these people, at least. Y'all see the Dicey was number one on the rank leaderboard, 16 yep. and 3. Y'all want to go back to the power Yo, rankings, huh? So <laughs> crazy. 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 That's what, what Brian was saying. Ooh man! I mean, what is it? What's Dicey been playing? <laughs> what can we get? Where, where, where are the stats? What is? What agent is he playing? Oh, his MMR is actually through the roof. There, oh, such a big we, go we might have to. We might have to take a look at the power rank. Is Tarek really in last place? Yeah, he's played a lot yeah, of games. He's also rough. played the most games. Yeah, yeah, he's played the most games. That is, uh, he can pick it back up. A lot of people playing this though. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Well, are you actually, in there? Actually, like I'm. I was looking for specific names, and I'm not saying like a, a, a good amount of them. Mostly, probably because they're practicing already. So already, what Josh is saying is gonna hit that. But yeah, yeah I'd, I, I was I'd already top, seeing. I'd be that, top though. twenty at least. I was watching uh, <laughs> watching Derek stream at the end of the night. He was playing in. He was playing. I think it was like the first or second ten man that he was playing in. And he was like, "Listen, man, I've been screaming all." He was like saying, "And I'm like, listen, I've been screaming all day. I've been." I've been just. <laughs> I think they had just got off. Like he was playing in a team with uh, with other players that he that his team had scrimmed against in a day, and the hundred thieves <laughs> had just ruined them. And he was like, "Listen, man, I've been, I've been, I've put in my work. I've put in my time. I've, I've, I've been doing some calling today." He's like, "Don't worry, I'll call some strats, but I'm taking it a bit easier." So, uh, it's we we had a we had a system. I know this is so apples to oranges but we had an elo based pug system that was for the top level people in tf2 back when i used to play at a decent level 
and I hardcore got into it for like a month and I got to the number one position, which was absurd because I wasn't anywhere near the best player. I just grinded the <laughs> fuck out of it. And then it got to the next month and I just thought, well, I've done it now and it didn't feel that great. So I'm just going to dick around like I usually do. And I just fucking ruined it. I just ruined it. I apologize, but I really <laughs> just fucked it up for everybody. And I think that was the worst part when the, when the people that are supposed to be good, because at the time that was like, you know, I, I would infect the people that I was playing with and we would, I was playing with the people that that were in like, like the top two teams in Europe. And so if those kind of people are dicking around, then there's nobody that's taking it seriously. And so <laughs> that that's why I'm concerned that at some point the tier one pros in Valorant will just decide it's not really worth their time to be like mm -hmm. taking it mega seriously. And at that point, to me, that is worse than letting shittier tier two players in. Because at least the shittier two tier, tier two players are going to be like trying, even if they're failing. If, yeah. if you know, Zekin decides one day, ah, oh, fuck it. I'm going to insult Yoru and Int. And he's just like, what, what? I'm, I'm a great player. I just, you know, I got 30 frags. Like, you know, at, at that point, that ah, is dead. Yep. Mm. Yep. You're right. You're actually, you're very right. It only takes by the one way, person who's too cool to try to fuck it all up. Like you, Josh. That was I mean, you, too you were stupid to try. I would say too stupid, frags. not too cool. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to say, Ball? The fucking, the, the people who win those FPL and rank S as well are never, I mean, they, sometimes when those guys are grinding, but it's, it's always a grind fest. It's always just the people who are playing the most, like always. And you can't even like come up with an equation for your mmr to like properly do it it's it's always the people who grind the most yeah except for Tarek, apparently <laughs> <laughs> except for poor Tarek. he's struggling down there <laughs> um all right let's get into some lock-in stuff i want to talk about the big tournament <sighs> listen you mentioned Derek, Under mm -hmm. thieves one of the favorites possibly we'll look at their bracket we're gonna do some pickums. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do so. Here's here's the plan, viewers and listeners. We are going to do the pickums, which goes up to the top four teams, and then we each have our oh, bold okay. predictions of who will win and who will come in second place. But initially, this is going to be a collaborative effort, and seeing how well we did working together on the power <laughs> ranking, I'm sure we will find success here working together on this pick -em. I have some opinions. Okay, well, let's hold on. <laughs> well, hold on, buddy. <laughs> let's set the stage. <laughs> um, and then we'll get to those opinions. Mm -hmm. So first of all, we're starting with the alpha bracket. Um, round of 16, yep. alpha bracket. We're just going to go in order. We are starting with Koi versus NRG Esports. Yep. Big game, uh off the jump. Ren, you yeah. said you have opinions. Do you have opinions on this game? Yeah, I do. I think um, NRG should be favorites based on the core that's on NRG, basically. Uh, and I think the kind of track record. But I do have some questions about, about NRG as well because they've got, obviously, Som on the team now. Um, and then having Ardis as well. I think Ardis capable of filling in the shoes of a player like Ye, but when it comes to like the combo of Ye versus Ma or Ye and Marv together when they were playing in, in Optic, that's that's big boots to fill, right? And yep. for someone like Som, who was kind of like a little bit all over the place in terms of the roles he was playing, definitely a gifted guy in terms of his, his individual skill, but it's a heavy ask, I think, for him to try and fill in that because Marv was punching for that number one spot almost for, for Smoke's play in uh, last year, I would say, arguably, alongside like Pancada and and Mako like up there it's definitely you know for debate um and Koi is a team that they should be at a disadvantage just because they've been put together fresh there's some pieces that were th there together right like Cold Mentor and Trex play together um yeah Cold but they, I do think Koi actually do have too. some good pieces they could end up doing quite well but I just think the core of NRG being that that former Optic squad artists coming in still as well you know as, as a bit of a heavy hitter for them they should be the favorites in that matchup I would say I think this one... Is this actually the first game that happens? Does anyone know whether this is, like, chronologically on the schedule? I don't know whether there is a schedule. So. There is a schedule. Oh, there is one? I'll look for it. I'll link it here. I mean, if this is... As it is, yeah. yeah it oh, is. it is the first game. I mean, there to me, this is the quintessential single elimination coin flip match that everyone's looking towards this tournament, thinking that it's going to be. Because you've got a team that has 
a great tenure together, like the core of NRG, exactly what Brent said, but they also used to lose in the group stage of tournaments actually frequently. Like, that was the meme, is that Optic were going to lose in groups, but they or lose a match, sorry, not lose as in go out, but lose a match in groups, they'd have to struggle back through the lower bracket. Yeah. Like, the, they're coming in, Chet's mauled in about the fact that they don't have any VODs on Koi. Uh, the, this is a very serious chance that NRG just go out right here in the first round. But... I guess you kind of have to think of them as favorites. The, I'm worried about the um, amount of strain that this roster is going to put on Victor. I think not having Ye there means that it's not that Ardis is a bad replacement for Ye. If anything, looking where the meta is going, maybe it's quite a nice time to have Ardis in the mix. But the amount of extra weight this puts on Victor's shoulders when Victor was actually playing a very selfless role, not one where he was set up for all of the kills... I'm worried about how that dynamic's going to work, and Som's just not a, got any level of experience playing smokes at this uh, at this degree. Plus, on the other side, you've got really talented players. Shados is a beast. Trex is a fucking beast. Wolfen's skill, just stop him from buying the operator in every fucking round, and this guy's going to be a menace with a rifle. And Starzo is extremely skilled too. This is a really skilled roster. Fuck knows how they're going to be playing together. Call the Mentor's decent, but uh, fuck knows what they're going to be doing together. But they're skilled. They're good enough to be able to win this game. I think this is a straight up flip a coin, motherfucker. Who knows who's going through? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm I'm rolling with a coin flip. I'm 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 rolling. I that Koi team is just way too fucking talented. I, I'm yeah. ball aware you at with it. Uh, I favor Koi slightly, actually, um, for reasons Josh already mentioned, Victor having to be strained and whatever, but I think about like how these teams are formed, and NRG has a core, right? So you, you expect, you know, they have a coach plus three, and you expect them to try to maybe mesh that with how, uh, obviously, with some adaptations to fit artists in, but that means that they're going to be working off a of structure. And for me, I see a team like Koi, and I think, yes, they're trying to build a playbook, but they're going to be a little looser, um, which will allow them to be a little bit more on the fly. Not that NRG is not like going to be bad at that. I think Finesse will obviously be as elite as he always has been. Uh, but when you are working within a structure, um, a lot of times, like if some slight thing goes wrong, you have to work extra to bring the whatever adaptation that you're going to call to life. Whereas for Koi, it's like, okay, I kind of don't know what we're supposed to do here, and uh, whatever audible we call is going to be a little bit easier to call and a little bit more flexible. And you're going to be in that situation constantly because your strat book isn't as developed. Um, so simply put, with the level that Koi has in terms of players and that aspect, I favor Koi. Uh, only slightly, though. Yeah, I, I mean, you didn't specifically ask, but I'd be going like 55% NRG. But I'm like going, maybe yeah, I, maybe this, even less than fifty five, maybe yeah. like fifty two. I don't 55 know. To 60. What, how do you decide cool. between the three percent difference there? Well, there's, there's quite a big difference to me between like uh, fifty two is like a, a flip a coin and it happens to be heavier on one side. <laughs> fifty five, <laughs> at least to me, is a margin of like I actually favor one team over the other. Josh, how do you compare? I haven't watched Wolfen. How do you compare him skill wise to artists? Um, Wolfen's skill with a rifle is absurdly good it's really good but motherfucker is the wardell born again he actually i've never seen someone buy the operator more times if you look at his stats he buys he he goes into rounds because he used to play chamber all the time he goes into rounds with the classic as one of his most picked weapons because he's just saving for an operator and using his headhunter uh his his most picked weapons are something like like the op is the most and then the classic and then the, the rifles are underneath that. Um, but his rifling, I think it's just obvious to me when you look at how he's been playing that he needs to get much more aggressive in rounds and he needs to get much more uh, comfortable rifling. And mm. I think those are easy adjustments for him to make to allow his like actual raw talent, which is really high, to shine. So he, he's certainly a developmental player, absolutely a developmental player, because the way that he's playing at the moment on whatever the fuck his other team was, I can't even remember, was not very good. But... Um, I think it's gonna, I think it's gonna come into the forefront at some point this year. I, I yeah, I I just think, to me, 
I'm imagining FNS listening to this and fucking molding out of his mind. He's like, what more do I have to do in a year than pilot the best team in the fucking existence of the game for you fuckers to predict me over Wolfen and Coldementer? And so I can't li- I can't help but listen to the little molding FNS in the back of my head. <laughs> You're right, FNS. You're right. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. You're right. I, I'm, I mean, my thing early on, though, with NRG, the guy who, to me, who always showed up, even if they were struggling early on, and was often the turning point player for them that would make the play to bring him back in the game, crashes. And they still got him. And I remember some of the games early on, I can't remember which tournament it was, but I've Correct me if I'm wrong. Wasn't Ye struggling in some of the early games yeah, at the international tournaments? W- one tournament. Oh, um, Copenhagen. It was one tournament. Okay. Groups of Copenhagen. Where Marv carried through the groups and yeah. Ye was struggling. But then they flipped roles in the playoffs and he fucking beasted. But right. Ye was also really good in the other group stages of the other tournaments. Okay. So. Gotcha. I just wanted to, wanted to recheck in on, on that front. Um, because I, I, I don't see Crashies having problems. I don't see artists having problems. Um, fuck, it's, it's tough. I, 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 God, I mean, I think I'm gonna roll with NRG, but I, I am on the coin flip. I know. I, I also think here. that there's a, um, like my win conditions of this tournament are completely different because of, um, because of single island, right? So, like a normal tournament, I'd say be on the leading edge of the meta, yada yada yada, like stuff that optic was usually really 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 good at right yeah um this time i I honestly think it's flipped i think you should be playing as fucking comfortable as you possibly can like the entire time i think whoever finds whatever is the most comfortable thing and just sticks with it and doesn't try to anti-strat too hard and doesn't try to go fucking crazy with harbor is going to do good and i think nrg is going to be on the complete opposite spectrum of that unfortunately um were were you both on the right for koi no i'm on Um, nrg I'm, oh, I'm the only okay. Koi, I think, right? Right, right, right. Yeah, so uh, I think, though... I, I do agree is... with what Ball just said so much, though. I, well, I, I, I just think... You, you, well you don't know where Koi is going, either. I mean, Koi might be playing fucking Yoru on every map. You, we really have no idea. <laughs> I mean, no point, you, you, can, about... you can expect Coldamenta and Barbar and whatever to be pretty standard. They were always pretty standard on a yield, yeah. though. Mm, yeah, that's, always that's right, a very actually, standard yeah. IGL player. I was looking at it recently. I'm I think, switching. You got me, Ball. I'm going. I'm switching. I the think. Court. I'm I think the that you got me. Your <laughs> criticism, Josh, of like saying Victor's always been quite a selfless player. Will I, here's the thing though. Artis has only ever played in really structured teams, arguably, and I think that this is going to be a circumstance where he's given a lot of resources to actually play. Victor is the guy that's going to be creating space. I, typically, the way it works. I, I would, I would. Sorry to cut into this argument between Bren and Josh, but uh, I, I think. Uh, artist actually has played in very unstructured teams, both on G2 and Fish 1, 2, 3 at the beginning. But yeah, I think G2 ago. was quite unstructured. I know, but really. he was a fucking god back then. Like. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> but, but, but I think that you will be able to... Artists will pick up, I think, the, the kind of role and position if they want to play in that kind of way, where Victor is creating space, yeah. being the, the and, sacrificial and I would also, for the team. I would Much say more Victor, difficult not playing Chamber, though. Victor has played star player roles before, though, and been really, really good. Like, before Ye, he was really yeah. good. Josh, you're, 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 you're doing a face like, I don't know, but you remember when he was on Phoenix and they beat Sentinels and he dropped like NRG. 900 on him? Yeah, exactly. It's basically just Phoenix is what I'm thinking about. Energy of favor. He had some great yeah. raise performances too. There were definitely games where they were setting up Victor's right. raise. And Let's he break was, the tie. You know, Let's move on. He's, yeah. It's, it's, it's so got to be NRG. On, hold on. I, 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 all right. Josh, who are you picking? NRG. Bren? NRG. I'm picking Koi. Bala? Koi. Flip the coin card. I think it's Koi. Yep, flip it. Unbelievable. <laughs> the coin has determined. Yeah, unbelievable. The coin has determined. Koi are making it through. It's <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> All right, uh, detonation versus giants. Let's spend twenty minutes giants. on this one. I giants. will tell you right now, this is the game where detonation win. <laughs> Uh, you're off the dude. I will tell you you're right now. I have so many questions. The game, the I have so win. many questions. I didn't vote for detonation. Why are they why and let me why? tell you, they don't look good. But why do I think they're going to win? Because there's always a game that ends up being the upset. And if you look on the other side no. of Giants Gaming. No, no, no. Look on the other side of Giants Gaming here. Look at the other side of Giants Gaming. Yeah. Okay, I was, well, listen, I was trying to do some, some, a bit of investigative journalism, trying to find out what's going on with his team. Sure. I was a bit confused with Giants because they've got a good roster, right? They've got, you know, Nuki coming into this team. Yeah, he's Great heavy hitter. He's all right, yeah. Yeah, he's all right. <laughs> but guess what? He's not playing duelist for them. He's not IGLing for them. 
He's playing initiator for them. And mm. in the most recent games, yeah. he's been struggling. Fatinho has been playing duelist for them because it's the only role that he plays, most likely. And the rest of the team has been filled up with, admittedly, good supportive players in EMEA. You've got, like, who is it? Ryman Hoodie, I think? Yeah, Ryman Hoodie. Ryman Hoodie. You have, I think EMEA does really well as a region of building up great players in those kind of roles where they play, like, traditional Sentinels or, like, Smokes and things. Guys who know how to play, like, their role in a team. But I think the roles are kind of a bit skew with with this one. And Giants are coming in. One, again, single limb, best of three. Detonation Gaming, they don't have the much, go much going forward. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be real with you. But I think they get through this round of one and then end up going out in a round of 16. Yeah, because they're playing Koi or NRG for sure. Yeah, but, uh, but I, think that, talking... I think that they are, I think they are favored here. Yeah, you're, you're talking. Favored? Yeah. Favored? Yeah. <sighs> You're you said it was an upset. upset, not a fucking. Come I on, think they're favored. They're just the better team. They win the majority of the <laughs> I time. I think they're favored. I think they're favored. Uh, Josh, how, how, how are you rolling with this? No, I'm not rolling with this. I think that <laughs> I think that Bren's points are actually fairly valid, but they're not valid enough to knock Giants underneath Detonation. I think Detonation are going to be a, a really messy team. I think the the VODs are going to be unkind to Detonation because I think they've only played like three BO1s and they're actually against pretty good teams, right? They played in that um, Japanese tournament. Yeah. I'm not even sure how seriously people were taking it, to be, to be fair, but it was like Fnatic, DRX. I can't even remember who the third team was. Um, the, re the reason oh, I'm paper gonna... X. yeah, they, I mean those are three paper really X. good teams. Paper X were were running cigarettes in the roster, so they were running their their yeah. sub. But I will say it was a difficult game for them. I was trying to judge it based off like the way that they were calling and and reacting to what Paper X were doing. Paper X refused to be conditioned. They were using it as a testing opportunity, which is really hard to IGL against because they would they would just basically throw in shit at the wall and they yeah. you know they. Trying to, trying so Paper, to... X, Paper X beat them playing with a PUBG player in their roster, and you think that they're going to beat Giants? Yes. Right. <laughs> no one I'm else is with me here? Glad we're on the same have you page. Watched, have you watched Josh, the Detonation VODs? Fucking Josh just Yeah, saying. I watched them play... Right. You watched I the Detonation VODs, did you? I watched them play against DRX and Fnatic, yeah. If I, I I'm the only I one who's watched, watched, watched all the Detonation VODs here, I feel like I have all the say on this pick. Mate, I didn't watch them play with cigarettes in the roster because he's a fucking content creator that played PUBG and CS. He's not a Valorant pro. They added him for trolling, for clout purposes. I'm not watching a VOD okay, of that. Listen, quote me when Detonation wins. Is what I'm, I'm going with... Yeah, I mean, I've got to go with John. I, 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 I could reasonably give Detonation like 20% chance of winning, but like, I mean, it's just Giants. Giants, gi the gi giants, giants are winning. We're moving on. We are, the 30% rule. 30% rule, but yeah. Yeah, 30% rule. I'm on board with that now. True. <laughs> um, Gen G versus Loud. I mean, I'm going Loud. loud. I think Loud right, should loud. win this, yeah. Home crowd. Do you, wanna, you don't want to talk about any based. justification? Uh, home crowd? No. Roster is based. Okay. We're moving on. All right. FPX versus Carmine Corp. Carmine Corp. F FPX. FPX. This common oh, core team. Dead. This yeah, common core dude. team. I can't do this. This common core team is We've... fucking trolling. Yes, this common core team actually makes trolling. no sense. This common core team has left out good francophone players and just thought, ah, fuck it. Scream can IGL another team into the ground whilst putting up absurdly good fucking stats and making everyone around him mauled out of control because you feel like he should be on a great team. He is a great player, and yet the team is just going downhill, downhill. The streets are talking, saying that they're playing dog shit comps. I didn't come up with that Bala whispered it in my ear. I don't know whether it's true, but I'm I'm ready. I'm fucking dead set ready to mold at this team. I think Scream and Devera are going to be good. I don't trust the rest of this roster. I don't think it's been put together very well. I think it's put, been put together for clout. FBX are rolling in China. They're going to yeah. come into Brazil and fucking poo. So many Let me spit for FBX as well here because so listen, many questions teams that that Edward Gaming, the number one team in China for the longest time, got superseded by FBX recently, right? Okay. They superseded themselves. Oh, Edward Gaming... Fucking they, rolled East Asia LCQ, roster? which it, they rolled East Asia LCQ with just pure fundamentals. FPX have showcased that they can not only go toe to toe with them in firepower, but they're actually playing normal comps. They're playing standard wow, Valorant they can and go playing toe it well. Toe to toe with a team that got smacked they're, around at Copenhagen. What are you talking about, bro? Dude, Dude, F I'm mean, wherever they FPX got smacked by Team Liquid. FPX are fucking. In the they are winning <laughs> this game, fam. Do not tell Why me you have. So do not tell me your faith in Carmen. Yeah. And it has nothing Do not tell me I'm playing to them. Carmine Corp are winning this and they're losing to Loud. There's no fucking Thank way, you, dude. I... FPX are winning this game. God damn. There's just no way. FPX are winning this game.
Dude, I can't Adults wait. Adults just core as far someone as I can throw this. them. FPX are winning this fucking game, someone, dude. I'm someone, telling you. Someone. Do not underestimate this team. Do not underestimate I'm this team. I mean, team. I guess we are because, I, I mean, I'm going with Carmine Core Ball. You're going with Carmine Core. Flip a coin. Fuck this shit. No, heads is oh FPX. The two men going with logic. This is insane. Heads Ball is FPX. I, the, the stoic, logic-based thing. Terry, fingers. whatever you say, Kurt. Heads is FPX. Yep. Tails is Carmine Corp. Send it. Let's fucking fuck. Fuck. <laughs> Wait, no, that's the wrong team. Yeah. Can we run that again? The, the coin is fucking biased, man. Like, yeah, the coin is biased. Biased to what? The coin the, is. The coin is, is, the coin is biased against me and Brent. Yeah. Oh, you just group. won your Dude, coin. No, we didn't. We didn't win the fucking coin. Truth. I was oh, with NRG. Guys. Yeah, yeah. Fuck you guys. Have you guys watched the, the, the coin? Is fucking sucks to suck. Have you I watched mean, FPX? You're, you're, you guys are gonna. Well, you're just going off of Scream. You will be thanking us and thanking scream. the coin yes, later. Scream. Oh, but God. also, I, 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 I no. I, what did what did Scream do when he played against EDG? How good was he? Fucking godlike, wasn't he? Uh, but how, what, yeah, he did. Not, he okay, it's he not fucking relevant. He could have been playing with Scream in the with the two highest level players. No, Edward Gaming fucking dominates the competition in East Asia LGQ. They dominate across the board in their region because of the pure fundamentals. Can you the competition in East Asia LGQ? They dominate across the board in their region because of the pure fundamentals, right? The thing that carried them. They didn't have tactics. They didn't have the fucking strategy, right? They didn't have tactics, Bren. You guys are hyping up their tactics. Edward Gaming were missing that. It was a fucking missing piece. But they're clear gatekeepers against teams that can't play good fucking macro Valorant. They can't, the, the, the teams that can't shut down the overwhelming style. Then why the did Team style. Liquid gatekeep them out of groups, bro? Because they've had experience playing in EMEA. FPX come about now with this team, <laughs> and they've taken over that number one spot in China now, and they have found a way to shut down Edward Gaming. And by the way, one promising tournament. Right now. Hmm? One tournament, and yes, we're saying they've, they've taken, taken over these people. Now they've taken up that mantle. Listen, I'll, this is I'll super give them, promising. I'll give them against twenty five percent. Fucking Carmen Corp, dog. Twenty five, dude. Carmen, Carmen Corp are not Corp. looking good. No, I mean, I'm, I'm, not, not, I'm not crazy on the high train. Good. Have you watched them? Look at the roster, man. Look at the roster. Have you seen these players I know play it's before? Not good. Fucking it's good. Hold on. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Are not on the same level of quality. Carmine Corp are not going to be good, but also. They're gonna be better than FBI. No, <laughs> okay, okay, all right, all right. Sorry. Let's move on. Fucking, I'm molding already. Tell, tell me a fucking uh, who? Who the fuck on FPX is going to be on the same level of quality as Scream and Nevera uh, at all? Like anybody who's at least close to even Kang Kang in, in terms of hype. You, if you guys are if you guys are bringing up some sort of player like that, I don't fucking know. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I don't know how you could even match them up. I don't think that you. I don't think that. The win condition for for it, it is. Carmen Core being that Scream and Nevera it, just frag out of control is. and that randomly was, win. But that, I'm not on board not, with that. That was the win condition it. for every single Team Liquid groups event that they <sighs> always made it out of groups for at every single LAN tournament. But this was. isn't Team Liquid. Every this single time. one. Don't this isn't work. Team Liquid. This is Carmen Core. I know. I'm just <sighs> saying you can always rely Dude, on Scream FPX and Nevera. FPX are winning this game. Is, yeah, 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 yeah. Who who are even the players on FPX? Is Omega better than Scream? I'm telling is you, it doesn't matter about is all the players. How the power level players are better than Scream, but this isn't ranked. This is a fucking turtle. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now, that game is gonna look like ranked. This is not that ranked. Game, that game is gonna look <laughs> like ranked. Going to win this game. <laughs> that game is gonna be in a mortal lobby. All right. Oh God. <laughs> There's like a plane. Oh, there's I a did. plane taking off from the planet like compound little... right now. I don't know if you guys. <laughs> was that a lightning that. strike? <laughs> no, it's an airplane. There's yeah, just an, there's a new dude, airport nearby. Uh, yeah, Brent. the PJ's coming down. The PJ's touching down. I'm, I'm actually going to the Bahamas <laughs> after the show. Um, <laughs> wow. All right, we're moving on PJ. because I'm going to lose my shit. BBL uh, versus DRX. Oh, let's give this one 20 minutes too. No, DRX let's away. give this one 30 DRX, minutes. DRX, DRX, away. DRX All right, DRX, good. DRX, 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 DRX. Jesus Lord Almighty. Yeah. We can all, okay, all right, this next board. one though. This next one is actually like a a banger. Yeah. I yeah, mean, an interesting. Well, is it a banger? No, I it's like it's... a quasi banger. It's what? like banger. It's like it's name <laughs> value banger, banger. But you should be a little bit worried about both the teams not being at their potential, like yep. the, uh, the best that you would think of when you think of their names. But it should still be a banger. It should still be like a seventy-five banger. Oh out of yeah, no, banger. it's it's billed as a title fight, but it's actually going to be a pretty mid bout. Like it's just, mm -hmm. I don't think either team is. I don't I have. Don't it's going to be mid. I don't have high hopes for either team in this tournament you don't have high i'm not gonna lie though yay? this this no. little bracket is unreal stacked i mean bbl are like thrown in with the wolves here 
You've got DRX, Cloud9, and PaperX all, you know, only one can survive out of them heading into yeah. the uh, heading into that next seat. That That's three good fucking teams. Yeah. See, the, 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 the problem I'm having, though, is I just don't think either team is going to get past DRX. I think DRX no. are going to win this follow-up game. But, but um, I, I don't think Cloud9 are okay. ready yet to beat a DRX. And I don't think PaperX are going to be good enough to beat DRX. I, I just think DRX is just going to... But, they're but, flat out okay. stronger than either team. But we're talking about Cloud9. Cloud9's PaperX. Yeah. I, I think Cloud9... I think, I think this is a, a bit of a coin flip again, personally. But I think Cloud9 should win it in my head. I think the, the, the era of PaperX playing their hyper-fast style has kind of got picked apart a little bit and, and showcased on numerous global stages that um, especially their tendency to like create really bespoke strats, like really custom cooking shit up. And if they you know don't have time to do that, they, they kind of struggle a little bit. They've had time, but also there's two new maps in the pool. Like there's the rework split and there's Lotus as well. So, and everyone's on the same page. Everyone's on the same playing field when it comes to preparation for those two kind of maps. I mean, you can pull from your old stuff and split, but I, I think it's, it's been from a while back, right? And the map has changed. Yeah. But so I think it was a great Paper X map back then too. Hmm. I, I, think I, I would favor I'm Cloud9. I'm excited to... Right. I, I don't think that's unreasonable. And I think that that would be like a pretty pretty fair to the quality of the roster but i'm excited to see paper X because i think that for the reasons that you mentioned with them being a roster that hasn't had to work on the basic shit in this off season the the advantage that they have coming into these early tournaments is that they can spend the time cooking up custom stuff for reworked split or for lotus or something like that they can in theory afford more time on that kind of creative stuff that they're known for and i'm not convinced that cloud is going to be um solid enough to withstand that yeah like, yes their style has been broken down on a global stage when you're talking about them playing against the best of the best you know uh, the uh, old fpx who are now mostly navi and uh like optic or or drx you know the absolute elite teams that played that really slow style really well yeah paper x isn't going to match up as well against them but i think that here cloud9 don't quite have that they don't have that tenure they don't have that experience together and I think Paper Rex is going to match up nicely. I would personally favor Paper Rex, but I think it's going to be like a another close, great match, I think, of just an, an entertaining match, maybe. Rather than being a great match, I think it's going to be an, a very entertaining one. Yeah, I think uh, Paper Rex, like uh, what I said earlier about like, oh, a team like who is trying to find the meta or whatever is going to have a disadvantage and trying to create whatever new shit. I think Paper X is the team that is the most immune to that and can go with the most tomfoolery bullshit, Harbor picks, Yoru picks, whatever, because not only are there two new maps that they can um, throw in and cause chaos with, but uh, at the same time, it's Paper X and they're, that's where they thrive. Um, so I think with the fact that this is single ELM2, there's no footage, um, really. I mean, there's actually a lot of, a decent amount of footage on Paper X. Um, yeah, both of these teams have got more VODs than most heading yep. into Sao Paulo. Yeah, I still think I favor Paper X because I, I don't think Cloud Nine outside of what well, outside of yeah nobody's ever played Paper X or even stepped foot on an international stage since um, 2021, right? So I hard go for Paper X here, uh, probably closer to 60 40. Yeah, I'm rolling with Paper X as well. Um. I I, <laughs> I don't think the Cloud9 pick is crazy though. I think that no, I don't a, think it's crazy either. I, no, I, I, I just I, think this, this is one of the such first a big chance of PaperX cooking too long. Just oh, like yeah. absolutely overcooking some shit on new maps and them not getting the oh, success I could definitely, they expect. I could definitely see that as a as a possible outcome. They come in, they're playing Harbor on Lotus yeah, or some crazy I can, shit. I can and really, really see this team just flops. overcooking. Yeah. The, I, the overall narrative, if you want to look at the patterns, the patterns that you've been weaving throughout <laughs> this, the overall pattern of the second place curse, which hit Paper X, where you get second at Copenhagen, you bomb out of champions. Normally, the pattern is that those teams tend to rebound and actually perform fairly well the next time. I haven't been that impressed with what I've seen from Paper X over the off season, but I think a lot of it's just been trying out some new ideas or whatever. Maybe they haven't been taking it like with utmost sincerity. 
And I do think, I mean, me and Balor have talked about this on previous episodes too. The fall off of Paper X is coming. The, the, this team is not going to be like world-class contender for the year if they continue playing in that strict style that they have been previously, I think. But that doesn't mean that they can't do it for one tournament. And that doesn't mean that they can't do oh, it so for the immediate tournament. So where was logic with Detonation Gaming? Dude, Detonation, get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, that doesn't mean I can't do it for one tournament. Detonation are winning the Team fucking first Team Heretics versus <laughs> Evil the Geniuses. Tournament. Who's going to win that epic matchup? Um, mm. Team Heretics. The, the no one wins. I think, I think Heretics will win. Um, you, you're, okay, Bren's rolling with Heretics. Bala, what are you feeling? EG. E e the Geniuses. Okay, Bala, in your world where EG win, who's playing for them? <laughs> The, the, the roster that you think. What, what do you mean? The fucking... roster that I think. What a way to twist my fucking question back on me <laughs> and reset all of my expectations. What? Wait, who, sorry. Who do you expect roster something other than the fucking starting roster? Like, what you, I'm sorry. I'm confused here. You, you're thinking Demon 1's going to play and start at Sao Paulo? There's no fucking chance. Like, okay, it's so going to be Bustio, Giacomo, Ethan, BCJ, and uh, Calm. There you go. That's going to be the roster. Yeah. You think? Oh, you I, think I, Ethan's just gonna take smokes away from Apoth? No, wait. Uh, Apoth isn't gonna play. Sorry, I'm confused. BCJ, BCJ is gonna play smokes. Ethan's gonna play flex. Dragon was okay. gonna play. Okay, yeah, wait. Right. What is that? Hold on. You think BCJ is gonna play full time? Has BCJ announced that he's playing full time smokes? If I just no, missed he's that. been he's been playing controller like the entire. Yeah, yeah. No, he's a great controller player as well. I'm not. I'm not saying. No, that no. That's I'm saying impossible. he's been playing controller the entire off season on rank. Ah, I see. Okay, okay. Right. Mm, I just think right, there's like. I think there's two or three different rosters that you could create here that would all seem kind of natural. So I just didn't really know what direction they wanted to take things in. Yeah, yeah. they have a uh, lot of players on that team. I mean, I guess, you know, listen, they can just <laughs> sub players out for by map. They can just do whatever there's they no want. No shot. Sub players that, out that, that between be rounds. Oh, he's better on defense on Haven. Let's get him in. Too many cooks. Screw face. Too many fucking cooks. Um, Surely EG have kind of trolled their off season. Like, it, what can be going on inside the EG camp where their where their practice would be more efficient than the other teams? Like, they have so many players, and they'll have had to go through pretty rigorous trials in order to pick up players that they're happy with. That will have just interrupted the time that they could have taken. Like other teams could have taken just practicing with their core five roster. And they must have tried a couple of different iterations of their primary team, right? Just at least to, to feel like they'd given it a shot, like just to see if there was anything they could have done better. That, that's all just going to be somewhat wasted time compared to what Heretics could have been doing, right? I th They're going to come in with a scrimmage advantage just because of their idea. And yeah. because I think Her Heretics as well, they've been playing tournaments. They have LAN experience. They've been on the stage. Even when the players aren't necessarily playing well individually in the moment, like Kellogg's, motherfucker is still going to swing like he's dropping 30 every game. I mean, they, they play like they're dropping 30, and all of them are like going crazy every game. Even if they're missing every shot, the confidence is still there. And they have the experience on LAN. Um... I, I'm gonna. I think I, I'm gonna kind of be begrudgingly go with Heretics, but I think that later in the year, EG would be a will be a better team than Heretics. But I think in the moment right now, EG's first LAN, Heretics have the experience, they have the confidence. I, I'm gonna go with Heretics begrudgingly. That's my pick. What in your world, Bala, where Busi and Jorgamo are playing together, and there's no chamber. What are they playing? Bustio's playing Sentinel. Bustio's just hard playing Sentinel role. Yeah, yeah. that's what he did before. Yeah, before Chamber, he played. Well, yeah, he's, he's played Duelist and all sorts though in the past. Though. Yeah, yeah, of course. Like he was swapping Jet, whatever. But um, I mean, who knows? That could happen too. Um, yeah, but I don't know who play who will play Sentinel in that case. Yeah, I, I really, I, I don't I, think it matters think, because Bustio will be playing Jet then. <laughs> I, I think the insanity of the EG idea. Uh, it kind of disguises the fact that they've but, got some decent pieces on the team, right? Like, yeah, if you just focus, insane pieces. Yeah, yeah, like, if you just focus do. on five players, you've got a decent roster. Uh, it's just about whether they fuck it up for themselves by having this grand vision of how the future of talent development is going to work or whatever EG's well, but sorry, I'm process is. I, 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 I honestly, I blocked out when you were talking earlier. Your idea is that they're fucking like been trialing with all sorts of different rosters and they're trying to... I mean, like o over the off season, in order to create 10 people that you're happy with, mm -hmm. you have to go and trial those players and you're going to want to integrate them into whatever you, your 
you know, when, when, you, when you're looking for players that you're not just grabbing from name value, you've got to have some kind of trialing system. Mm -hmm. And you've got to spend the time actually trialing them out with the current roster as well. You're not going to trial like a whole separate five-man team while your current team is scrimming. And then once you have the players that you're happy with, you're going to have to test out what you want the starting roster to be. Like you have some idea, obviously, of what you want the starting roster to be, but then you need to try a couple of other pieces. Otherwise, what the fuck is even the point of having 10 players? Mm. So they'll have spent so some significant portion of time. Of time doing trials yeah. yeah they must have and spent they, some significant portion of time like, yeah. i know their trials were really long in comparison to other mm -hmm. teams and some many teams were just not even trialing at all but like, maybe they just were maybe they then, were just playing for longer so they've still had enough practice but their system is inherently yes takes yes. longer than other teams to to put up but but since then the idea i believe is 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 and always has been as to use them as an alt team to yeah. practice against and not actually uh. to be subbing them in and out other than the fact that uh, eventually there will be underperformances and you sub them out that in that yeah. case. Uh, but like, I, that's going to take time anyways. I would go with EG. I think I think the five player EG? roster that they can put together. Yeah, I, I was think really not expecting crazy? you to go that direction, dude. dude I think <laughs> nine fucking players I, on the uh, team. Uh, Heretics of lot of experience already with yeah. this team put I, together with actually roles in place. I they're, know they're, Heretics have been playing in the off season and they've just been looking kind of. Man, I've seen this roster play, these players rather, play so many times before. It's tired. It it doesn't look like it's got that many legs to me. I'm not excited about the roster in the slightest. Team Heritage. And I think the player I think the player quality from a roster of Jorgamo, Boostio, BCJ, Ethan, and yeah, let's say Com. I think that's good enough to be able to beat Heretics if they've had some time so, together. Man. This is the resurgence of Heretics. Oh, okay. I mean, oh, now yeah. we're going into... This is the resurgence of heretics, I'm telling you. This is the resurgence of heretics. We are not talking heretics. about the resurgence of heretics, because there is no... There, there is it, not this a is the resurgence of heretics. Of heretics. It's, okay. Huh. This is um, Kellogg's and Mixwell on the big stage, fucking yes, my rocking like it's 2020 you, again. It's going to be the case. The Why? Are What's concrete. the basis? They've been getting experience. They've been losing. Losing equals learning. <laughs> they've been learning, learning for a long time. They've been learning, learning for years. Actually. Learning, they've been learning, but they actually so have that experience on the big stage. <laughs> I think. I think mean, when when you're up there on the stage, fucking, you're in Brazil. Listen, Mixwell, <laughs> Mixwell's gonna have the fucking yeah. experience. He's like, lads, been to many events like these before. You know, he's gonna be like, been to many events like this before. He's gonna be able I mean, to give them the fucking they, the tips and they, tricks of the trade. A lot of the events. And that's I'm saying, why, uh, that, that, I'm saying right now, you're gonna see a resurgence in them. The, the downfall oh, of the core the of the G2 no, 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 team the coin, came about coin. around the time of the chamber resurgence and the chamber meta time. We're moving back in time a little bit, honestly, with the way the picks are gonna go. I think you're gonna start to see teams that had success in 2021 as a core, like G2, like Heretics right now, which is the old G2 core. I think you're gonna start to see them honestly. Bro, come Brent, they were running they were running Viper on a scent. They had some cool ideas, but they way overcooked it and they lost the team liquid playing with two subs and no IGL. I mean, once I watched that game, <laughs> they, I lost winning, all fucking hope. They're winning this match. Um, They've lost their I mean, minds. I don't know how they're gonna win the match. Okay. I, Order I, in the I'm pod. Flip, Order. I'm flipping the heretics to end this. I'm flipping the heretics. The Not pot. because of Bren's argument. They're winning the just match. because I think this is a coin flip anyways. Okay. We have three for heretics. Josh is in ruins. <laughs> Sorry, Josh. I'm just, I'm so sick of this. MIBR <laughs> versus Talon Esports. Talon. This is Talon. MIBR. Dude, this Talon have got fucking Patapan back. The boys yeah. eating sushi. Sure? Yes, raw playing, fish 100%. everywhere. I don't we, think Padapan's playing. Bro. We don't know if oh, he's he? playing, but Padapan <laughs> is in the roster. Oh, that's oh. a problem. <laughs> that's 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 an issue. He's in the roster. Paddy was playing. But one of the one of the other reasons I'm excited about this team as well is because you get to see Sushi Boys back yep. playing the Killjoy more more often. Chamber out of the mix. Yep. Talent's back in it. MIBR. Too many unknowns for me to 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 take a punt on them. Honestly, as a team at the moment, they've got one thing going for them, which is Bazooka coaching. Um, they got another thing going for them. The entire got, stadium. Yeah, it's going it's to be, be going cheering for them. Crazy for I think the pressure yeah. will crush them, though. <laughs> no, dude, the pressure is not going to crush I think the pressure no, will crush them. I really just, do. You're, you're, These, you're they, just saying stuff. You're they saying ha they stuff. haven't they have had experience on the big stage. They yes, they have. Experience. It's yes, a heat and riz. They've I been mean, fucking... He's not even playing ones. his fucking primary duelist role for them, by the way. What recently? What? Why? What is he? What? Actually, that might be Captain. What the that's fuck? Captain. That's, 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 that's an amazing. Captain. I'm picking him up here. I think it's Paul. Well, who are you picking? Paul, you want? I'm picking MIBR. MIBR. Josh. 
No, I'm going Talon. I, I think Kurt I think Talon point. has I'm, been I, I'm been losing my talent. Talent. Heads, talent. You're, you're Talon. <laughs> I'm going to give it to MIBR because of home field advantage. We're All right, Kurt's breaking the tie. It's it's Talon, dog. <laughs> no. You're going to be shitting me. Every, not a coin. Every tie is going against me. This is Every insane. time I'm on the wrong Please side. Please flip though. the coin. Uh, they've all gone against you, Josh, because you're not picking the winner correctly. Let's move on to the Omega group. <laughs> Team Wait, Liquid we're versus the first Secret. Round, right. Probably for a good thing. For the love of God, can no, we have... No, we're going through the whole thing, but we're doing... Oh, can can, round can we Christ. please have a 60-second one here? Liquid versus Secret. Liquid. It is Liquid. Liquid. Yeah, Liquid. 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 Bola? I decided. Just liquid. lock it in, please. Okay, thank yes. God. Okay. Navi versus... Also Kuru? Navi. 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 Doesn't Fucking matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. No, no Josh, don't provoke Crew. him. Don't Crew. provoke I'm him. I'm telling you, you're, you're, you're right putting, now. You're putting a red shirt in front of the bull. Don't provoke him. Do not. <laughs> do not, do not just crew. lost all right the season. Now. The roster doesn't look good. Why would you be on the croupium? This is the uptick in crew. I think again with a, with a fucking thirty-two team <laughs> bracket, you gotta have it's you gotta throw in <laughs> matches like this where there's some unexpected element, and this is the unexpected element. I think crew win this match and then lose against Liquid in the quarters. This is where it's gonna happen again. It's gonna be detonation, and it's gonna be crew Bro. versus Navi. I'm telling Brent, you now, Brent, it's Brent, gonna Brent. be this. I, I, I'm an expert at predicting upsets, Bren, but you can't predict every fucking match to be an upset. It's not. Because... A, it's not, dude. Just because you disagree with every team that I've said so far doesn't mean <laughs> everyone I'm predicting is an upset. You said Dead Nation were a favorite. That's one of the upsets. This is the second one. Every other team in my in the FPX are the every favorite. Every other team I have put in I think FPX valid, are the valid arguments for every other team. This is the uh... second upset in a 32 team tournament. <laughs> Order in the pod. There are so many I matches. Need, You're I telling need... me everyone is going no. the favorites way? No, it's uh, not. No. <laughs> but You're right. Heretics are not Brent, the favorite. You're talking... But they're winning. Navi, bro. Navi, why do you have any idea? Uh, uh, like, in order for an upset to, to happen, yeah. right? How, how do you have Navi being a team that gets upset? Too much footage. Why Navi? <laughs> Footage. Too much footage. It's been they months played since they played, they played one too much tournament footage. with CNED. Too much footage. They're going to plug and play with CNED. That's what they Navi played in tournament with Chamber. Like four months ago. I don't know what to tell you. They're going <laughs> to they're they're no plug and play CNED. CNED didn't really have the same heights in it's 2022. It's a new meta. Crew it's comes a in. a new meta. All of the uncertainties. Best of three, singular limb, Lotus, Split, Crew. Yo. Used to be fucking godlike on Split. Red this Bull. Team Stop comes in. sending us Red Bulls. This team comes <laughs> in. This <laughs> is a match they're winning. Stop. Crew are winning versus Navi. <laughs> okay, well, they will. Levy everyone else picked Navi, so they're going to. Levy your time. Levy your time. Levy your time. Levy your time here. You going to go against that as well? No, oh my God, win here. but if there was <laughs> no, an upset for you to predict, it would be like a match okay. like this, bro. No, <laughs> this one is the most one-sided oh of the game. Oh my games. God, let me, let me, Egg, go somewhere else, bro. Japan <laughs> doesn't want to hear you. Just <laughs> shut the fuck up. God damn. Dude, Zayda should have made any roster moves in the offseason. They are doomed I, to failure. Oh and Leviathan is going to smoke this bracket. Leviathan is looking hot right now. Okay, I fully agree. I fully agree. Leviathan's going to win. All we right. can move on. I'm just saying, Brenton, please. Some reason. In I'm your giving prediction. you reasoning. Guys. I'm giving you fucking reasoning. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what to say, man. Deep I don't breaths. know what to say. Deep breath. Do you want a CBD gummy? No. Deep, deep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me cook. <laughs> Team Vital, yo, you, yeah, you've been cooking hard. You've, the, 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 Dude, the I smoke already, detectors oh going God. off. Um, Team Vitality look versus look Global look Esports. Look Bren, <laughs> I'm going to give this one to you for. <laughs> Don't you dare with your little smirk. Don't you dare. There's no way. Vitality have been playing. They've been they've been playing. They've been getting match experience. They're consistent. Twistin is Zeus. They are winning. Vitality's your team, Bren. You can't I know, you, do this you were, to them. You were on the Vitality train. This is me and yours team, man. I have one thing to say. Oh, my God. Okay, what is the one thing? I got many things to say, actually. Okay, well, you now you, that was your one thing to say? That no. you have many things to say? Hello, India. G fucker. <laughs> They're winning this fucking game. Not 
winning Global this game. Global esports are winning They're this not, game the versus roster Vitality. Is chaos. Don't it's get me wrong. <laughs> Vitality, chaos. great fucking team. I'm not going to argue that Vitality aren't a great team, oh, but Global man. esports, I think they've managed to fucking somehow harness the chaos of this roster. They have. Th let's be. I'm going to be honest with you. They're not going to be using all of the pieces. This is not the same dilemma as the EG dilemma. They have been scrimming with the with the players that they picked up, and a lot of them are probably not going to be the the Indian roster that they picked up initially. It's going to be the same pieces that they picked up that we know are going to be playing for Do you them. Think they're going to have SK Rossi play? How does that? I don't think so. Him? Okay. He yes, the, he he's been playing initiator for them, hasn't oh, he? Oh, he has. Okay. Yeah, I believe so. I think, I think. With APAC, when I watch a lot of these APAC teams, I don't know what this is. I what? Love this. <laughs> Bren, go on. Don't, the, don't get distracted. I've been distracted like a. Content. This is a subway surfer TikTok to me. I'm like fucking. I'm just locked in. The, the. <laughs> where was I? My train of thought. Global sports. I think when I look at a lot of these APAC teams, the major thing that gets missing a lot of the time is their ability to not necessarily play the game in, on an individual basis. Mechanically, there are so many fucking talented players individually. And this, this roster is picked up with multitudes of talented players. Texture is a freak of nature. Manette, freak of nature as well. But I think the one thing that they've actually got now is somebody who comes from the NA environment, someone who's actually had experience playing on LAN, which is Aaron, to try and wrangle the troops a little bit and actually teach them how to think about the game in, in that kind of manner that the rest of the regions are. When you watch the the lower kind of the, the lower level APAC teams go to the global stage in the past, they've got absolutely fucking smashed. And not necessarily because their player quality isn't good. It's always because the way they think about the game is just too slow. They're not agile enough. They're not flexible enough in the moment. Global esports, I think, have got the talent. They've taken a huge fucking risk picking up this many duelist players. But I think Aaron is going to be able to wrangle some level of control out of this one. And for them to be actually a pretty good team as well in the APAC APAC franchising next year, this year. If if Aaron actually manages to take essentially like all the rest of his team are duelist mains. If he and not just duel like as far as I'm aware, duelist mains that don't have much experience outside of that those roles. If he manages to take a team of himself and four duelist mains and put them together for the first tournament of the year where they can win a game here, that is fucking incredible. He shouldn't be expected to do that. That's that's like something where it's like way down the road we give credit to him for what he's been able to do like with months of time on his hands. This this was absurd. Like SK Rossi's going to have to change his role and doesn't have very much experience. Monier's a duelist main, isn't he? And he's going to be moving over to play. I, literally, I don't even know what. Tex just presumably going to be playing the main jet role for the team, and he's going to be fabulous. I'm sure he's been great before when he was playing in Korea. Yeah. Uh, then um, I guess Bazzi's been playing a range of stuff actually. So yeah. he's he's one of the players that has more flexibility with Aaron. But <clears throat> I, ju I just. This would be such a monumental achievement for them to win a game, genuinely. And it's not like Vitality is the biggest scalp you can take, but it's big enough. I think they are definitely the underdogs. I, there's, I don't even know what percent you would put on it. 30%. Yeah, 30, yeah, 30%. Maybe. I would say it's yeah. probably around 52 but I, I agree with what I'm just... I, I Josh, think, I agree with what you said very much. If, if they were able to win this game... That would be uh, unbelievable. I mean, that the well, work then that, the entire world would be rooting for them. Like, I mean, that would be an yeah, legitimately. unbelievable win if they could be that I'm good telling you, hello this India, early on. G fighting, with everyone changing roles. <laughs> do, do they even all? What language are they speaking? Uh, do, the, do, do they all speak English, English well? English. Yeah, I've been watching. I've been watching, the I've been watching the streams I mean, of Texture and Aaron, and uh, right, uh, I've been exactly. watching. I've been watching them all play together. What do you together. say, Ball? I don't. I didn't think it was good English, but maybe. <laughs> this team has been boot camping streams? for a long time as well. By the way, they Global have, Esports have. has been boot camping yeah. for a long time. They have been cooking. Yeah. I, the, if they can no, beat I, I Vitality, Vitality are my top tier gatekeeper team. If they beat them, that would be astounding because I think Vitality are hella consistent. The player quality is good across the board. I, I just. It would be an amazing victory, yeah. but I gotta go Vitality. Football is Rex Regium Keon. Holy fuck, by the way, look at that. Of all of the games that we've stumbled across, what a draw in the bracket for yeah. Foot to be playing against it's, RRQ. Foot are playing this. They're, they're winning this. No, I'm going Rex Regium Keon. You're fucking baby. off the goop. They have, uh, you know, homie who played well at the, You're kidding the me. event. So. Name two of their players. <laughs> uh, you know, the, the guy with the T, the... To Tebatol. 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 
Total Terrell. Potomac. <laughs> I, I'm, I forget, I'm so not. Good. But he was really good not, on Viper at that one event. So I'm rolling with that. I was, I was, I did my own pickums before the show so that yeah, I would have like, That's you know, a I'm solid saying. idea of what I actually thought. And I was really going back and forth on this one, genuinely. I, I think there's a good chance for RRQ to win this. But the footballist players are just going to be leaning into Max Turkey. They're going to be swinging and they're going to be taking duels. And I think they're just going to end up being Yeah, that. I think when you get to level of games like this, that play style reigns supreme over teams that are trying to put it together. I'm telling you, it just does. It just does. The teams that are just purely focusing on, you know, playing that play style of taking fights, making sure that they trade off each other and just literally ego, ego dueling, those are the teams that absolutely dismantle teams that aren't up to the same level, but are trying to play, quote unquote, proper Valorant, where they're trying to have like good team play. It, it rips it to pieces. Your game plan falls apart. I'm not even sure, by the way, that that's how footballists should be characterized as a team that does that. But I think that they can do that in this game and win. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to go, I'm the gonna second... go RQ, but also it's entirely irrelevant because 100 Thieves is going to smoke whoever makes it through that. I mean, so Josh, yeah. who are you going with? Uh, I ended up going for foot, but I think it's going to be close. Walla? Foot. All right, foot are making it through. Under Thieves are beating Edward Gaming, and we're not spending more than three seconds on this. Brent, don't even look at me. <laughs> don't even look at me. It's a, it's a hundred not... thieves. Okay. It's a hundred thieves yeah. winning this We one. spent eight seconds on it. It's a hundred thieves winning it. Sentinels versus Fnatic. Fnatic. Yeah, I think... How much time you want to spend on looking... this one? We could give this one two minutes and 26 seconds. If Sentinels hadn't played in the Ludwig Tarek Invitational, we'd be spending 30 minutes on this. Yep. Probably. It's Sentinels. It's possible. Actually, I but don't know if, if, if we didn't know on. if we didn't Why, know how well, long they'd been scrimming for. Let's true. say that, like, if we didn't know how long that Sentinels had been able to play with each other, if we had an idea in our heads that Sentinels could have been playing for a long time in boot camping or something, this would be fairly even, in my opinion. But the fact that Sentinels have just not been playing for like, you know, they've only got like a month's practice heading into this, and it, Fnatic have been kind of grinding the tournaments. Man, they haven't. They, Fnatic oh, all day long. Fnatic hold has up. not been practicing either. Like, hold on a second. Hold they, on. they have. They've just started practicing. Yeah, please like, hold up. At this, like, the same time as sentinels almost they, mm. like yeah they went to the events but they weren't practicing back then they weren't practicing between the events they were just no. flying out playing the match yeah it was holiday season there's no way they were practicing and, and many also confirmed on this space that they weren't necessarily even, like even, playing even, too hard even if that's the case though they still have the trio core to build from they're, they're not starting from such an uh, a, yes. a foundational level as Sentinels. So they've already got an advantage I... there. And also, this Fnatic team is fucking crazy stacked. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. just obscenely stacked. They're not starting from the ground floor like Sentinels are. But pound I gotta for pound, go Fnatic. Sentinels compare, I think, to Fnatic. Yeah. Look I, at the talent on that team, that. man. There's no. I don't think there's an argument that they they cannot hold a candle to Fnatic's talent. Fnatic, uh, of course, I think talent can. wise, best team in EMEA. Like if you look at the individual players, but if you look at this team as well, when you've got players like if you think tens, if you can reach the same heights, but I'm not even looking at tens as an individual. I'm looking at Pankata, who was the best smokes player of last year. Zekken, who was potentially one of the best flex players of last year. Sassy, who's got a fucking great mind for the game, and I think he's going to be able to fulfill that kind of like secondary caller. Um, that was so badly needed in Exet that ended up happening for them way better than what was going on last year yeah, for Exet. Yeah, I mean you're 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 very correct. You could probably argue that these are the two most stacked teams if you're just looking at individual player quality. But Fnatic are just working from uh, you know a home that has already been built, and now they're refurbishing. They're adding on you know yeah. ooh, let's add a second story. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas and also center just like add nothing the the foundation as well in terms of coaching staff and whatnot is i mean everybody's working from fresh start basically over at sentinels other than zach and death with the with the coach even kaplan I, as well i would argue there's a good track addition. record with with sentinels though we know what their yeah. coaching staff has done the the sentinels coaching sure. staff based on what we've seen though at um the ludwig Tarek invitational we're leaning much more into the strengths of the players and going for like weird um ideas than um than setting that foundational floor in, in, in place. And I think that that's the win con here. I think for Sentinels, the actual win condition in this match is to think of yourselves as underdogs and try to lean into some funky comps that are going to take Boaster off guard where you know what your objective is much better than they know how to counter it. I think they're, they're the upset team and they should play like it in this um, scenario. And it'll be on Fnatic to try and control it. Like the, 
play to just set up tens on jet and just go fucking crazy. It doesn't make sense for the long term, but for no. one tournament or p for potentially one match, yeah, fuck it, go for it. I don't think they will do that though. I don't think they will. They 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 played yeah, like that yeah. with a tire invitational because like limited practice is the best way to to do it on short notice. But I think they they will be playing properly, and I think it actually will suit to their strengths way more. Oh, you know, the other thing that I forgot is that these games are actually happening way later, aren't they? So they will yeah. have had a decent amount of prac by the time they get into this. Now, there is one point <laughs> that I do want to bring up about Fnatic, the one individual player. As much as you can sing the praises of Bosa's IGLing, when the going gets rough, when the backs are against the wall, when it's a high-pressure match, the calling... I don't know if this is the team play. I, I'll never know if this is internal in the team, if it's like a problem on his end, or if it was literally just the pieces and the communication breaks down and Bosa's doing his best to call and no one's listening or what. But there has been a breakdown in terms of just the team play, I think, for, for Fnatic, just historically, when, they, when they've been in the, the really high pressure scenarios. And I don't think the pressure gets any harder in, than right now. You know, it's, a, it's the fucking best of the, the singular limb, best of three. I've, the pressure begins yeah. from the get go. No, you but are. If, if here's could... here's my thing. If I'm if I take what you just said into account, my um what I feel against goes against that though is just at this point now, the player quality on the team is so obscene that it can make up for that. I mean Chronicle has proven that he's a god on land. Leo was a yeah. god with guild. I mean, the talent on the team is so outrageous. That let's say uh, b for whatever reason, I'll, again I'll just I'll roll with that. Let's say Boaster's not calling great in this game, or he's feeling shaky. I mean, do you think that like a shaky Boaster will necessarily be significantly worse than a really new Sentinels that hasn't been hasn't been given the time to build? I think yet? they're on equal footing. You know, yeah. In so terms of prep. Then, I just don't think that's tr nah. I just don't think. I, I just don't, don't really agree. agree with that. I also yeah. think look at how Def performs when he, his teams don't have a good grasp on what's going on. His individual ability goes through the floor. I mean, to like genuinely one of the worst players in the tournament when he's had when his team have had bad runs. Um, Def has been right down there at the bottom. And to me, watching him, it was the same at the Ludwig Tarek thing too. When the team doesn't have a good idea of what's going on, he loses his place in the team, and he doesn't have the individual ability to carry himself in those instances i think there's you know he, he becomes sure. a liability in those situations you just have to hope that sentinels has enough time to uh, remedy that before the match I, all right are we, i think sorry go uh, on ball and then let's move on next real quick i think a, a month of practice is far more than you guys are thinking it is in this maybe case. yeah um because i i personally think that that's good like that's a that's a good amount of time and like it should, I, I think both teams will come into this pretty prepped, you know, especially for single limb bracket, like that sort of thing. You're not, you're not going off the walls trying to prep a wide field. You're prepping for the teams that are in your path. And yeah. That's it almost. Yeah. I, I, I think you're right. I also, yeah, Sentinels are just with more time, they're going to be mm -hmm. sick, I think. But I'm going Fnatic. Just want to make sure we're all, are we all, we're on the Fnatic train here. I'm, I'm, I'm going Sentinels. Fnatic. Brendan Sen, what are you on, Josh? Fnatic. I'm Fnatic, yeah. Fnatic, Fnatic. Okay, Fnatic going through. And finally, T1 versus Furia. Furia. I'm going Furia as well. Yeah, I'm going Furia. I, I think that this is a somewhat weaker matchup at the end, but T1 just did not impress me. No. Also going Furia. All Furia, yeah. I mean, T1 just looked dire. And the home field advantage. I think Furia are going to go hard. All right, we're into the quarter finals. Mm. Koi versus Giants at the top. Now, there should be NRG <laughs> winning. <laughs> yeah, I agree. NRG are that. making the semis, but because this Koi is, probably this is what then? we've been delivered. So, um, in this magical universe where Koi and Giants are playing in the quarters and not Detonation NRG, <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, I would say Koi would be the ones to take this, I think. Boy, uh, I think of got their roles a little bit more solidified in terms of uh, what they want to be playing compared to comparatively to what Giants I think might be playing um, and if, they've, if they're capable of beating NRG at this point they should be beating Giants I think I would pick NRG or Koi to be Giants at this point in the tournament honestly either that makes it through so I'm, I'm sticking with Koi what do you what do you feel on Josh yeah same same exact point as well whoever wins the Koi NRG game is favored to make the semis ball you rolling 
Uh, yeah, I agree with those things, but I think Giants wins. Uh, it's just a feeling of fucking. Uh, now he comes in with the vibe. Now check you come upset. in with the, the vibe check. Yeah, uh, it wouldn't be an upset against NRG though. I think only Giants would upset Koi here, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Um, okay. Two I see EU what you teams. Mean. It's the the fact that I think Nuki uh, is probably probably well versed against Guild uh, or, or like against former Guild against Coldamenta in general. I think Rhyme as well has impressed me as an IGL. Like I feel like this is one of those places where Koi just won't necessarily be fully fully ready to play against people who are ready to play against them. Like they they have experience against each other is what I'm gonna say. Um, who knows? Mm. Loud versus Carmine Corp in the quarterfinal. Loud. Loud to beat an FPX Corp. here, yeah. They're beating FPX or no. Carmine Corp. Carmine Corp are winning. If Carmine Corp are beating FPX in this fucking universe, then they are beating Loud <laughs> as well. Is, that is, that <laughs> doesn't track at all. I'm sorry, they just that are. Just if Carmine Corp are beating track. FPX in this world, they are beating Loud as I well. Mean, you just said two plus two equals five. That's no, what you just no, said. No, no, I didn't. I mean, but was, just, that's wasn't crazy. your argument, though, like that? That Carmen Corp was that bad that there's no way that FPX lose against them. No, so, I think FPX. I think FPX have have a lot of practice playing against a team that leans so fucking heavy into the aim, and they're still the best team in China. So they go up against a team like Carmen Corp, who you're saying are relying. They just can't beat Scream. He's too good at aiming. They they're gonna fucking beat Carmen but Corp. But okay. in this Number, world where Carmen Corp, bruh, have, they've sealed up the gaps comparing... and the strats are all there, and they've got the oh firepower, they're being loud. They're not gonna have strats though. <laughs> they're being loud. They're not gonna have you're strats, and they're gonna lose to loud. No, no, I, I, I'm getting drawn into an argument about the previous game right now, so I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna continue. Uh, I think loud wins. Josh. Yeah, loud. Yeah. Okay. All right. Loud's going through. Next. DRX versus Paper X. I'm DRX. Going DRX. Y'all all DR yeah. all DRX and all DRX and yep. Heretics versus MIBR. Heretics. Heretics. Dude, I don't even know here. I mean, I feel like these teams are both around a similar level. Yeah. I'm in uh, I'm inclined maybe to go towards heretics unless it's I'm going I mean I, I think Dude, I would have Talon winning this series right here as well, but I just don't really believe in MIBR to the same degree, so it's making me lean towards Heretics. But I, I don't know. I'm really lost here. MIBR. I'm going MIBR. It's, it's Heretics. Well, we, we're we're split down the middle. You gotta, you, we, are, we going, <laughs> are we split down the middle? Yeah, yes. Ball and All right, MIBR. we're flipping the coin. I just want to see... MIBR, I want to see Brazilian teams go far in this tournament. It'd be so hype. Yeah, I think that they're going to have the, the crowd is going to be going crazy. MIBR has the firepower to match up against the guys on Heretics. I, I think they can take it. So, MIBR tails. Heads, MIBR. Heads, MIBR. It is heads, <laughs> MIBR. No, <laughs> the head, MIBR on the bottom of the fucking bracket. They are tails. What are you talking you about? Them. You did <laughs> what the fuck are you talking you, about? Right. It's Heretics. I mean, it raised his voice about it. Uh, after the heretics. result came Dude, through, it's... after I called it, MIBR won the coin toss. It, it makes no sense to say MIBR heads when they're at the bottom. Well, then you should have spoke up before the coin was you flipped. You said it while you... he was flipping. No, I What are you talking about? about? We had difference. two people. If it's fucking the coin about it. was flipping, and you were like, uh, that'd be a hot. Uh, that's that's really that. Do you want to do a <laughs> reset I mean, get a best of three? No. Okay. No. I mean, if you go back no. and roll just, just keep going. Team Liquid, Navi. You'll be thanking us later. Team Liquid versus Navi. Team Liquid, take this. I'm going with Liquid as well. I am genuinely going with Liquid as well. Bola, Navi shouldn't even be, be here. Bola, you can't be putting, you can't be resting your forehead on the microphone. Liquid have gnats. Navi shouldn't even be here. Liquid have gnats, dude. Liquid, liquid. Yeah, but Navi is Navi, bro. Fucking, what are you talking about? Navi is Navi. So Honestly, get I, I feel like Fucking. the vibes are off. <laughs> Yeah, the vibes are getting really <laughs> rancid right now, honestly. I feel like the, the Navi the vibes, vibes are kind of off. Vibes, I'm not the gonna vibes lie are getting y'all. rancid right now. No, you feeling the vibes it's, though? The vibes are Team Liquid. They're giving. I think they're cooking. The Navi are kind of giving me. This is gonna sound crazy, but Navi, Navi are giving me the same vibes as the Nation before the last qualifier. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you need to say about the vibes? What are you? What are you? What are you fucking Bola, talking you about? Missed it. I said Navi in this quarterfinal game. They're giving me the same vibes as the nation before this last qualifier. I'm getting the same vibe. <laughs> <laughs>
You, uh, uh, there's who's just, leaving the team? No, there's just some. I don't know. There's just something in the air. I just don't. I don't know. I just I, uh, liquid dude, have, uh, so, uh, I Are you the, predicting fucking Sugetsu not having visa or something? Some bullshit like that? No, like, uh, no, 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 no. no, I just. It think is the, a massive difference in terms of the like in-game um, comms and player personalities replacing artists for Charles. CNET. Yeah, uh, that is a massive difference in terms of what CNET is going to be contributing to. Arguing with Angel about the strategies, what he's going to be coming in mid-game. You know, th there's just a massive difference there. Also, in terms of the agents that he can potentially play if they want to move the roles around and stuff. Like, th there's a huge difference there that could be really detrimental to Na'Vi. I'm just not sure it knocks Na'Vi under Liquid. I Ooh, call me... No, hold on. Let me quit know. for a second here. Liquid. Let's look at the pieces, right? Nats, right? Nats. Setting the fucking bar pretty high, 2021. Chamber out of the mix. This guy gets to return to that classic Sentinel role that he was known for. The role that, you know, this guy taking hyper intelligent timings, great lurks, great game sense, great yeah. mechanics. The guy's got it all. Safe, yeah. proven but animal, proven animal as a player. Yeah. Redgar, yeah. incredible mind for the game, great veteran presence, can be a great centerpiece to really just like call the shots. And I think it's going to work really well in this system. And I quite like Emil as a coach. I think Emil was cooking at champs. Didn't have much time with what Liquid had. And I think Liquid was a difficult team to get the most out of with the pieces they got, just purely because of the history of that team. But he made the most of it. And I think that he was getting them on a good direction, a good, good trajectory. I think Liquid honestly could look pretty, pretty clean as we head into Brazil, deep, deeper into this tournament. Round of 16, I think they win this. I think they go far. What, what do you actually envision the roles looking like on Liquid? I think like they, you, that's up to them. <laughs> to decide. Like I, I always struggle when I look at this Team Liquid roster as to figuring out what they're going to end up playing. They played like um, they played Yampi Safe as like a duelist duo in in that tournament where they were playing in Red Bull home ground, right? Where they were playing with yeah. the two subs. Um, and I just don't know if they go to a double initiator composition, which is what most people are playing right now. What do they end up? doing who moves into that position is it is it Yampi Sokas. playing that kind of thing well uh, no Sokas well, is going to be one of them or is you know is yeah. Yampi going to be playing smokes because he did play some Astra at some point like maybe that's the shift they go for I, I'm just not willing to go full on on this team until I see the proof of concept I need to see at least a match well at this to point you would the, have seen what it and you would be it. predicting them Maybe if they'd played with their full roster at Red Bull home ground and they'd done really well. I no, might, no, no. Yeah. You've already seen them at this point in the bracket. Pull up the pickums. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've seen them play against Team I've Secret. Seen. <laughs> well, you've seen, the the you've seen them play against Team Secret <laughs> and they won. You've also watched Na'Vi just barely squeak out a win against Crew in this circumstance. No, 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 no. You're, you're putting those fucking thoughts into my head. Both of these teams have, in all likelihood, slaughtered the previous games. They are both massive favorites over no. the other teams. No, 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 no. Yes, no, no. they are. No, Liquid are winning this one. I think, I think that this is really where they're going to start heating up. I'm going for a small weight towards Na'Vi, like 55, so, 60% so we're, Na'Vi. We're split again. Yeah. I'm going Liquid. Father, you're going for Na'Vi, right? Hey, at least I got it. I mean, wait, fuck. I've lost every fucking coin flip, Barley. You're fucking gonna up. lose. Why? Come back to me, man. All right, so. I'm sorry. I, I have, just have to take Bren's side on this one. Team I'm Liquid, it, we'll establish this right away. Team Liquid you, is heads. Navi is tails. There fucking you go. always lose. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Dude. I'm telling you. Liquid are taking it. I'm telling you. Oh Liquid God. are taking it. Josh is losing yeah. shit. Dude. <laughs> every every coin flip I've lost. <laughs> um All right, all right, all right. Next, hey, whatever. At least Liquid's going through. Next I mean, we have Leviathan. I, I can never lose here. Okay, I'm not even brooking any fucking Quite discussion. Count. Leviathan are winning this game yeah. and winning the yeah, semi-final. I think Leviathan. Uh, Leviathan. Lock them in already. They lock them in already. And 100 teams are easily beating Foot. Yeah. Hold on, Kurt. I want to hold hold on. I want to tell people what's going on. They're listening. Uh, so we have Leviathan beating Vitality. They're in the in the round of eight, and then we have the next game is football. It's Hundred Thieves. Hundred Thieves obviously win that. We're not even talking yep. about it. And then Fnatic Furia. I'm going with Fnatic. I don't think there's much to discuss at this point. I think Fnatic are just mm -hmm. they're Fnatic. Uh, all right, so we're down to eight teams. We're back at the top of the bracket now, and we have Koi versus Loud. <clears throat> I'm rolling with Loud, baby. 
At this yeah, point, yeah, I think Loud would be tempted. You know, the, you know the wild thing? I actually think that Loud have got a really good bracket here to go through to the finals. I think you look at the other teams that are in this like little pyramid here. Yeah. The, the, the on-paper most dangerous team here is probably NRG because of what they've been able to achieve, the core of the team there. Maybe the most skilled roster they're up against is like a Koi or I don't know if you're, if you're on the screen train, maybe it's a Kamen Core or something. But the, overall, they don't actually have anyone else nasty good in their bracket. And for a team that's just changed two players around, defending champions overall, coming in, playing in their hometown, they've got a fucking prime opportunity to blaze through this bracket and be waiting um, as the, the, I guess, the first team for that final four. Like, if this doesn't happen, it's a bit of a fumble from Loud because you can see the path all the way there. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm going with Loud. Baller, are you on the Loud train here? I am. Okay. Just, just make sure. This should be DRX Heretics. <laughs> And then we have okay. Then we have. Oh, it DRX. doesn't matter who it, it is. It literally yeah. should doesn't matter who it is. Heretics, DRX, heretics will matter. be winning against the Rx here. Heretics won the fucking coin no, 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 flip. No, no, heretics, not, heretics win versus the Rx here. We're not giving the same. I'm time. telling you now. So the Rx makes it through. The Rx makes it through. The goo. You guys, are, do you genuinely skipping over me? Do you genuinely? Okay. Well, the problem is doesn't matter. Heretics lose the previous game, but they should have won the coin flip. So you want Heretics to have beaten MIBR? Yep. And then in the round of eight, they're going to beat DRX. Yes, this is the most Heretics. unlikely one yet. I will admit, this is the most unlikely one yet, but it's the one that's also most likely to happen because DRX are going to get the resurgence <laughs> of that fucking eight to fifth place curse. That is, well, it was fifth to sixth, but in this case, it's going to be eight to fifth. This is where they go out before they get it that is. top. I mean, if you, if this you is where they go out. This is where they go yes, out. I'm telling no you. For the, this is where they go out. For the DRX out. curse, the DRX There's curse is actually no quite way. difficult to come into action because they I'm either lose to... They either probably lose to a Paper X Cloud9 team, or if they win that game, there's not anyone that dangerous. You know, unless you're buying super hard into the curse narrative like Bren is. Mm. You really got them losing to MIBR, Heretics, EG, Talon? Yeah. Nah, mate. <laughs> they no lose to all fucking of those teams. way. They're either making top four or they're going out in the round of 16, which okay. is not DRX usually. Just over override my opinion, I guess. Okay. Um, all right. So then Team Liquid <laughs> versus Leviathan. What are we what are we feeling on this one? We didn't even talk about Levi Leviathan team vitality, Brandon. You should have had something to say about that too. But no, okay, I just thought anyways. Leviathan was just winning. <laughs> well, there you have it. Okay. Uh, team Levi wow. Leviathan. I think Leviathan are primed to maybe even win the whole tournament. I'm right there yeah, on I'm, the Leviathan. I'm expecting right. Leviathan here, honestly. I think as oh much as Liquid have got God. everything going for them, that Leviathan will be on a heat fuck, this I'm actually going to start really molding now. <laughs> <laughs> Ball. Why no. don't you like Leviathan? I Ball. like them, but come on now. Not over Liquid. You're not going to put them over Liquid or Navi. Not over Liquid? Not over I Liquid would put or them over Navi. Liquid 10 days out of 10. Hold no, on. I'm, I'm passing on. Ball the Ball. Ball ISO. This is all you. But, but, bro, Navi or Liquid here? Liquid with fucking who are making it all the way to the semifinals over Navi, mind you, are not going to lose to Leviathan deep into this, this shit. Like who? Who at this point? By the way, you don't even know who who they're playing. Uh, if they're playing Casano or Taco, or if you even have a preference. Um, and at the same time, too, if you wa I, like, I watched them at, at Mobistar, and to me, they looked less good than they did before. And they were they were fucking around, sure, trying to figure out whose whose role is what. But they looked less good with uh, Melzer not there. I think even though whoever I forget who they picked up at this point, I don't remember his name. But even though he was playing good, Nelser, he was playing really good. Um, but yeah, no, Team Liquid or Navi, whoever's there is winning this game. I I think Leviathan. I, I'm I'm big on Leviathan. I think that they're going to do really well here. But I think why, that they're though? why because I think that the the primary thing that I was concerned about was that they wouldn't be able to figure out who was playing Smokes. But I love I I really like the place that they've settled on. I think that. Um, when I was watching M Mazzino play Smokes, it looks good. When I've seen King play Smokes, it looks good. Um, they, I believe in their coaching. I like the, um, I like the fact that they haven't compromised their roster completely by trying to play Kesnit and Taco. They're much more focused on actually having a functioning team system than they are trying to get it the best players possible and create some kind of weird super team. I think the calling has been good. King in particular played like a beast in the previous tournaments, and Leviathan when they were you know, the previous iteration of the team was basically only losing to the massive heavy hitters. 
of the tournaments, you know, uh, past. And I think a lot of those have been messed with. You know, like a lot of the teams that you think of as the big heavy hitters that are like above Leviathan in the power rankings, they've either made changes like NRG or they, uh, you know, made changes like Na'Vi make, uh, putting CNED into the roster. I think Leviathan is going to grow into this squad. And I think this is the tournament for them to show it. Plus, I feel like they're playing in they're they're, they're playing in um, a region that is surely going to be cheering for them in a game where they're playing against Navi or Liquid. Like they, the 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 team is still going to be rooted for unless they're playing directly against a Brazilian team. I just I feel like this is their path. This is their fucking run. Maybe. This is their time. Maybe. Uh... I don't know how true that is if Kesnet's playing. We'll see. Oh, well, yeah, if Kesnet's playing. Uh, no, yeah. I might have lost all yeah. of that good weight. I, I don't know about that one, I don't know about that one. Uh, well, I hate to tell you <laughs> yeah, guys, but I'm going Yeah, that's a very good point. So Maybe gonna, they're all fucked. We're on a... We're flipping a coin. We're flipping, we're flipping, flipping again. I'm going go. to Yeah, I've lost everyone of these. I've lost everyone of these. Leviathan are really good, but I just... I feel like... I don't think... This is the one I need to win, Mr. Tails Leviathan. Yes. Mr. Coin, I need you. Tails Leviathan. Wait, what is happening? The coin is flipping. It's no, it is his fucking time! <laughs> it is his. No way! And Liquid go through. Oh my god. Every time. Uh, never lucky. Never lucky. <laughs> Every uh, time. Dude, There's I gotta no go way. play the... I, I'm gonna go play some numbers Josh, after this. I've won every so coin toss. Way. At least you have plausible deniability. We're going to the casino. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Just no way. Oh, Josh is under the okay. desk. Final team. Final match, right? That's someone's fantasy. Yeah, it's 100 Thieves versus Fnatic. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? That was good. That was good. Um, 100 Thieves versus Fnatic. We haven't spoken much about 100 Thieves. This yet, is but a big game. Well, yeah, I mean, the bracket is so easy so up easy until this them. point. Yeah, I mean, but they're going to just smash two teams and then run into Fnatic. Um, this is super tough. I'm going to go out on a limb and say I think these might be the two best teams in the tournament. And they're playing at the round of eight. Because they have... Uh, I just... Fraudnatic super team is going to cause me heart palpitations, I'm sure. Because I'm so, so willing to jump on board and be like, these guys are the favorites. They look so fucking good. Their roster is stacked. But I've just been there before. I've been there before with Fnatic, and I just I I'm not I'm not willing yeah. to beat I'm not willing yeah. to go there again just yet. It's, I think that Hundred Thieves have proven more. They have more of a core. They've won tournaments in in the off season. Cryo's looking. I, I mean, I suppose they haven't really shown anything outside of the chamber meta yet, or like you know what their adjustment is directly going to yeah. be. But I still just think that they're going to adapt perfectly fine. They have all the pieces to do that. I feel like 100 Thieves should be favored here over the take super this. team. I agree with you. I think 100 Thieves take this. I, oh, go this, on, bro, this sorry, should be man. the year of 100 Thieves, right? In theory, right? The, the, year? The, yes, this should be the year of 100 Thieves. The, they've got the core roster that's being built. <clears throat> Last year, inexperience was honestly the thing that was that's overruling them, I think, as well. You can argue as well, you know, maybe not the firepower being there, but Will, I thought, played all right at the at champs. Um, so I wouldn't even say that Fireplay was a big problem, but definitely an experience. I was talking to Sean, uh, or I was talking to, to DDK, I remember, at Champs about it, and, you know, it was one of the things that he mentioned was about the inexperience at the time for them, and that playing a big part, and um, I think that they've only just been gaining experience since then. These, these aren't necessarily young players anymore. They're coming into this one, actually, with a couple of events under their belts, with a lot of match experience, with an existing core, and with upgrades in terms of their firepower, because they've got Cryo in. I think that 100 Thieves, this looks like their year. They should be shining. Uh, I am going to be going with Fnatic. This is my one... This is it. This, is my, this might be my last ride, but I am going on the <laughs> Fnatic hype train one final go around um what you were saying josh with the with the meta change under thieves definitely have the pieces to work in the current meta and they definitely don't i don't think they're a team that needs the chamber but they have i think at times misused some of the players on the roles uh, uh mis misusing them in regards to some of the roles they had that was more so early 
on in the first few months of this roster existing. But I think that some that uh, you know, at points, not everything was perfectly optimized, and with only having one chance to play against a top team here in the new meta. I mean, they're going to they could beat up the other two teams running four controllers. It doesn't matter what they play. Um their first challenge is going to be against I think the team that a team that certainly on paper could win the tournament. And I think Fnatic will absolutely clearly not have any problems in this meta at all. I mean, if you just if you're playing Raze and you throw Durka back on Raze, his Raze was fucking cracked. Um I think Fnatic have all the pieces to be insane in this meta. I think 100 Thieves have the pieces to do it as well, but it's not necessarily as clear-cut, just put player on X and put player on Y. Um, I, I think there's more figuring out to do there and with what you want Cryo to do, unless he just has the hidden god raise in the tuck that we've just never seen. Um, yeah, that's, that is a big question. So for, I, for I, think, I think that, uh, you know, like if, if, they're, if the way they're playing is not necessarily optimized, that's not going to punish them in their first two matches, but it will against Fnatic. Also, I think even if 100 Thieves are optimized, you have a really tight match, unless for some reason this Fnatic team is just flopping. But I am going to go with, they will not be flopping. This roster is way too fucking goaded for them to not be good, surely. Mm. Sure. sure. Mm. I'm taking one last ride on the mm. Fnatic hype train. Mm. They have four players on this roster that could be in the top 10 reasonably. Like, that's just fucking outrageous. This team is ultra stacked. Yeah, they are very stacked. And the rules make sense. The pressure's on. I, I'm going with Fnatic, but I'm scared. But yeah. I punched my ticket. One last ride. Funny, but <laughs> uh, him how, how, how times the, have changed. Yeah. No, I've gone for Koi, Liquid, and Fnatic in this. <laughs> I mean, that's just yeah, mental. I mean, I did go with of yourself. I, if you, uh, could, I know. If you could visit your past self right now. <laughs> <laughs> I did go with Loud in the in the qualifier up there. Uh, all right, so our four teams that we picked to qualify are Loud and DRX in the Alpha bracket, and Team Liquid and Fnatic, or Team Liquid and Hundred Thieves. Sorry. In the Omega bracket. Oh, yeah. If you press submit yeah, on the one side, you have to redo the other one. That's pretty weird. Team That's Liquid, fine. Navi, Team Liquid, Leviathan, Leviathan. Uh, Team Liquid. <laughs> yeah, Leviathan. Leviathan. <laughs> uh, Leviathan, right, guys? Right? Foot, 100 Thieves, mm. Fnatic, Furia. Yep. Yep. Fnatic. And then 100 Thieves. 100 Thieves. 100 Thieves. Boom. 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 Okay, now. Boom. Alrighty. Now that we've got that out of the way, do I have something to say. Okay. What do you have to say, Brent? <laughs> You've all been part of a social experiment. <laughs> what? Before this I've episode, working with Harvard? I sent Kurt two images of a bracket that I built. This is my bracket uh, for who is going to win the whole thing based on me flipping a coin for every single match. <laughs> and so I came into this episode and I said to Kurt, I am going to fight for the bracket on every turn for it to try and match the coin flip that I got. <laughs> every single time, as hard as I possibly could. So I tried so hard for Heretics to go all no deep. Wonder. I tried Heretics. so hard for FPX to go <laughs> deep. <laughs> I tried so fucking hard. Yeah. And actually the coin got it, I think, you know, was, was siding with the majority in a lot of these circumstances. You've got DRX going pretty far. You've got 100 Thieves going pretty far. You've got, you know, well, Sentinel's actually going pretty far as well. But you've all been part of my social experiment of me okay. um, essentially <laughs> trying to argue for the coin flip uh, for the entire episode. I have a really important question. Who will win the match? That I want Bren to give me the answer. <laughs> Not the coin, Bren. But which one? Who will win, FPX or Carmine Corp? Ah, uh, FPX. <laughs> At that point, it's FPX. <laughs> At that point, it's FPX. We can move on now. Yeah. <laughs> and now we can move on. <laughs> oh my God. Well, I was wondering why the hell you were going back. You're like, oh, the uh, quick flip. <laughs> Jesus. <sighs> what? Oh a God. Did we really do that and for an hour and 20 minutes? <laughs> yes. 
I didn't actually feel short that Short episode, long. guys, by the way. Short episode. It didn't feel that long. Good thing we, yeah, as soon as, as soon good as thing we started, started early. As soon as you said it's going to be a short episode, I was like, mate, I'm, that? Seeing, I'm seeing pickums. I'm seeing uh, like so much man, shit. I was yeah, in a gonna stupor take so at the beginning. Um, <laughs> Lord Almighty. All right. Bold predictions. <laughs> Who will win the lock in? And the reveal is Josh. Fana uh, bleh, Josh with 100 Thieves as the winner. DRX, second place. Myself, I've gone with Fanatic as the winner. Loud, second place. Bren has also gone with 100 Thieves winning and DRX second. And Ball has gone with the Navi win and DRX second. Three people with <laughs> DRX in second place. Just uh, not myself. Um, let's, let's start with, with, with you and, and Josh here. You've both mm -hmm. gone with the 100 Thieves victory. I think it's what I said before. I, um, 100 Thieves, this should be their the year, year to shine. I'm not going to repeat the same points that I just made, but on DRX's point, because I, I really did just barrel over them um, because the coin told me to. Um, but DRX have a quarter they're coming into this with. A lot of practice time. I think that they, they, have, all of the, they have all the makings of what makes APAC um, a fun region to watch. And I think a lot, of the, a lot of the region takes inspiration from DRX as a team with you know, the big utility executes and things like that. But DRX, I think, have not only proven themselves on the global stage at this point, but they've got, I think, the perfect mix now of um, great calling, great, great IGLing that comes from stacks and, I guess, Zest at this point now is like kind of like secondary to that. And uh, they've sorted out the roles as well. RB now taking a bit more of a backseat and Buzz being able to play Duelist moving back to the jet. I think they've also got a pretty easy bracket, I think, right? When you look at the, their run to even get yeah. to the final two, they should have a pretty easy uh, time of things, all things considered. So, yeah, that's why I've got Outside DRX of Paper X, yeah. Or Cloud9. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that was pretty similar reasons for me. But the other two teams that I had making the top four were both like South American teams. I had um, Loud and uh, Leviathan. And I think that of the two, I am still really excited about Leviathan and seeing them play. And I think that they, they could go very deep. I, I just tended to favor the teams that were more stable for this first tournament of the year. The teams that have had to make the fewest changes, the teams that have a really pre-existing core and a pre-existing playbook and pre-existing synergies. And that is 100 Thieves, DRX, uh, Leviathan to some degree with Na'Vi, but only one of those can make it through. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I think... I, and to me, Loud, I think, are uh, in a great position to make the top four. But at that point, I'm not convinced that we didn't really talk about loud too much over the course of this but i'm not sold yet that two e's and cow and Zine are just going to fit in perfectly within the system they've just got such enormous shoes to fill with sassy and Pancada moving out um i think that they're probably going to be good players but i think it's going to be difficult for them to fill the same spots that sassy and Pancada filled where they were you know up with the absolute best in the world um and if they do i think that would be astounding especially considering both of them are having to switch their roles a little bit with two e's going from full-time like entry duelist player to smokes and cowan zine going from flex to initiator i think that might just be too much for loud to get it all the way yeah i i've decided i i've gone with loud making it in second place um for couple uh, i'll i'll just outline a couple main reasons i guess which they're playing drx in or I, i'm presuming that they're playing drx right that's how the bracket yeah. works um yeah. there's like not a bracket Semis. flip as far as i know right yeah so they're playing drx in the semi that is about where drx tend to finish uh, i still have a lot of faith in the core three of loud that they have there's still an insane level of talent between those guys and I think that with the home crowd going fucking crazy for them um, and, and DRX tending to struggle at that point in the tournament, at least historically outside of champions, I guess, really, I can see that being an environment for a repeat of something that has happened to them many times previously. Um, like if the crowd is fired up and Ospos is hitting hard, I can see that being the catalyst for, for DRX kind of kind of crumbling at a point they've crumbled at previously. Um, that's why I've got loud going through. Like I said, I am. This is it. This is it for Fnatic. This is it. This is it. This is the, it's it's now. 
or fucking never. <laughs> I'm, I'm over it. If it's, if it's, I mean, Josh, usually you're the, the one caping for Fnatic. Have, have you, you've, you're done? You're over him? No, I'm not, it's not that I'm done at all. It's just that I think it's quite tough for them to make it through 100 Thieves and then make it through, um, who's the other team that they'd have to play? Like Leviathan. a Navi or a oh, Leviathan, Navi, yeah, something yeah, like well, that, or a Liquid. Up. Yeah, I mean, they, they've even got a bit of a, yeah, a scary team to, to start things off. So I don't think their path is great. And I just think that at some point, they're going to hit the same roadblocks that they have done before. Um, I, they'll, uh, my, my take is that I think Fnatic will or should win one trophy this year. There are three trophies to play for this year. I think Fnatic should win one of them. I don't know which one it's going to be, and, you know, we'll... We'll have to see if they're capable of doing this. When you're just when you're thinking Tokyo. about, I mean, just you know, setting up Durka to entry on Raze, and then you have Leo it and feels so good, to doesn't close it? out the yeah. round. Yeah. Alfier, Sentinel. If it, if it isn't maybe, work, like, if it doesn't like work KJ. this year, I mean, dude, it's is, never gonna work. I mean, it's just outlandish. <laughs> like it's yeah, disgusting. The it's on this gross. Ugh. Ugh. That's the I think fucking. I literally. Count. That's I literally crazy. tweeted that when they when they put the team together, when they announced the team, I said that this is the only super team heading into next year, and if Boaster doesn't win a trophy with these guys, he never will. So they they really do have massive yeah. um, expectations on their shoulders because it's just a fucking goated team. It looks crazy. Yeah, that's why that's why I'm going with them. They look goated, and they should be goated. But yeah, so I'm going with the ball. Uh, what were your picks again? Sorry. Navi. And Rabbit, oh, yeah. You have Navi. Navi winning. over Derek. Speak yep. to the Navi victory. Uh, Navi is the only team who have gone through anything like this other than like Sentinels at Reykjavik, which is just a fucking insane gauntlet. Actually, Sentinels at Reykjavik is dominance in an upper bracket. So that's not related. But lower bracket gauntlet at Copenhagen, super impressive. Lower bracket gauntlet to top four at Champions, also fucking insane. Um, and I truly believe that Sugetsu Shao are like, I, I mean, in this meta, it's perfect for them. And they were already top five in the world, like type of beat, you know, like, so I don't expect them to lose to the, their bracket. And then they're going to go up against 100 Thieves, which, by the way, it's mad cool that we can actually see like who the fuck they'd potentially go up against. In yeah. my opinion, it's, uh, it's 100 Thieves, but we'll see. I think they beat both 100 Thieves and Fnatic. Um, with whatever amount of time they'll have to prepare through the dark days or whatever. Um, and then on the other side, I have Loud versus DRX. And I simply don't think that Loud will be ready to make it past a DRX. Um, other than that, I think they, Loud, if they get to this point, will have uh, had the benefit of a tumultuous bracket. Like they are not, like if they go up against NRG, I don't think NRG, they lose to NRG. I don't think if they go up against Koi, they lose to them. I think the only situation is if, um, sorry, they beat them. I think the only situation they go through is is against uh, Giants. But in either case, I think DRX will be able to handle the rest of that bracket too. So, yep. And DRX, by the way, improved at Champions, and I believe that they'll continue improving uh, here. And also, they showed that they can take down home home favorites, so I'm not really concerned about that. And they showed insanely good performances in clutch games and like in really close games. They had that comeback against Furia, was it? They had that game against FPX, uh, two games against FPX. They had that game against Optic as well, where yeah. they lost in the end, but they continued to show resilience. I think that is a turning point for DRX to come all the way through. I'm super high on... I'm not super high. I'm relatively high on DRX coming in. Obviously, I have them at number two. I guess that is super high. But if they run RB as their main duelist because they need a raise in the team, I would like to reserve the right to change my entire bracket. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm saying. All right. Well, I'm not going to give you that luxury. And those are our predictions. <laughs> um, all right. Why it's weekly award, and then we're out of here, baby. <laughs> I gotta get this weekly award to the compound. Oh shit, they're on my ass. <laughs> All right. Where is All right. it? Wow. Um, I think it might be over there in that pile. The third place oh, trophy. Oh yeah. Well. Oh yeah. So well, good. yeah. That one. 
It's a secret. Where oh, that one is. it's a secret. That Charlie. one is a. That one's a secret, actually. Oh. That one is. Uh, there's this the why the new Wise Weekly Award videos is kind of a story arc. <laughs> you have to you have to follow the story. Oh, arc. oh uh, dude, you'll uh, you'll find what, out like the, what like the fucking scenes in Better Call Saul. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. it's like the Gene Takovich <laughs> scenes. Yeah. yeah, okay. Black and white. There's a second story. Yeah. All right. This week. The weekly award. We actually talked about it a bit earlier with Phase. I'm giving it to Poised, baby. Um, oh yeah, this is because good. this was pretty pretty wild. This uh, story that he shared earlier this week about how he's been playing uh, this whole time in uh, in Valorant with oh. with a with an with a severe injury to his arm and and hand, and he was still managing to be a top level player this whole time. Um, with you know, while whilst dealing with that, um, and continues to be a top player, and uh, when he said that he posted this, he said today marks the day that I can feel the slightest feeling in my fingertips, and I'm so damn happy. I've sacrificed a lot to get where I am, and it was worth every second of it. Um, so that is just a a wild story that he's been able to to be such yeah. a, a strong contending player for so long with that, and. You know, it'll be cool to continue to watch the, the story with FaZe this year. This story, I mean, this is just crazy, honestly. Just the, the determination to persevere. You, you get thrown not just a minor obstacle, an obstacle that would, I think, make almost everybody quit their dreams of being a pro player is you literally cannot feel uh, from below your elbow in one of your, in one of your hands. And in the, in the tweet longer, he, he describes it like, you don't kind of realize how big of a deal it is, but it is a massive deal in terms of being able to feel like the, the tactile sensation of, of the buttons that you're pressing in order to actually get a feel for it. And so yeah. he had to change his People entire are... play style of, of becoming more of an intelligent player, more of the IGLing type, you know, picking up IGLing to make up for that kind of facts. And, uh, and he overcame, you know, the, like you said, the hurdle where he's regained a bit of feeling now in his hand. I mean, such a fucking dope story, honestly. Mad respect to Poise um, for sharing it and for, for going through all of that as well. And that, yeah. Can't help but now just wish for, you know, the best, I think, for him off the back of something like this. Yeah. I, I, could you pull that it, up again for a second, Kurt? I want to read part of the second thing so people are aware. But he says, as the years passed, I slowly regained the senses in my forearms back and the top of my hand, but not in my palms or fingertips, which is the most important for gaming and movement. Never gave up. I realized that I can still play, but now have to trust what I see and use spatial cognitive ability and senses to even press down my keys. Anyone who plays a high-level Valorant or CS understands that even one millisecond of hesitation means your death. One misclick or misinput can cost an entire round or game. Nobody will ever understand this difficulty. Is and probably the first pro player that cannot feel his keyboard hand. I'm only 70% of the mechanical player I used to be. Never gave up and said there are other ways to go pro. And then he speaks to, you know, like focusing on being an yeah. IGL. And yeah, it's just a wild story. Um, so very cool. Excited to see more of him and, and FaZe this year what they can do in Ascension. Listen, we might underrate them. Dicey, 16-3 in the Tarek. That's what I'm saying. In the Tarek bugs. <laughs> we always He's get cooking it up. Wrong. All right, thank you guys for watching. Chat 121 We will see you next week for episode 122. Make sure to leave a comment in the YouTube section down below about, uh, I don't know, just figure it out. I don't give a shit. We'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.